Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends. Wherever you are on the face of this very planet, we welcome you again to another exciting edition of Radio Biafra live broadcast on this very day, the 22nd day of March in the year of our most high, Chukukika Biama 2020. The time now is precisely eight minutes past 7 p.m. in the land of Biafra. The same number of minutes past the top of the hour, regardless of where you are, where you are domiciled, what you are doing. We are here to propagate the gospel of the living God in heaven. We are here to spread the gospel of redemption, the gospel of hope, the gospel of freedom, the gospel of restoration, the gospel of truth, the gospel of enlightenment, the gospel of education, this very gospel that will lead us into that very promised land that the Almighty God in heaven, Chukwokika Biyama Puruminyanine, promised us in times of old, which we must make manifest in this very time, because the time has come for Biafra. There is no other period in our existence more suited to the salvation of a people who are in danger of becoming extinct than now, that is the duty of IPOB, that is the job we are doing, and that is what we must continue to do until Biafra is restored in our time. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to each and every one of you, regardless of where you are domiciled, what you are doing, what you are encountering, this very coronavirus, this very modern plague of our time, my prayer now and always shall be that you protect, guide and shield each and every one of you, regardless, I say, regardless of where you are listening from, our hearts go out to those who have lost loved ones in this very pandemic, more especially of course, not directly related to what is happening, but the family of Bienu, our own very principal officer of state, Mazobi de Obienu, that lost his very precious mother. We also remember our Africa rep, our continental rep, Mazi George Onib. These are servants of the Most High, doing wonderful work, but are in a very difficult situation at the moment. Because before we come on air, I understand that George Onibe's younger brother also passed in India. Our hearts, our prayers, our thoughts are with the families of Obienu and Onibe at this very point in time. On behalf of not just IPOB, the whole world, my family, my immediate family. We say, please accept our most profound and deepest condolences at your loss. Only Chukwokika Biyama knows everything. Only him can determine who lives and who passes on. But be rest assured that you are in our prayers. We are thinking about you, these very noble families, the Obienu family, and also the Onyibe family. Our hearts go out to all these people. You are in our thoughts. We are one big family stretching from end to end of this very earth. Just know that you have your brothers and your sisters always with you. And we shall be able to fulfill our obligation as it is right for us to do so. Before we continue, we must pray as it is customary for us to pray now and always because elohim is in heaven presiding over the affairs of men on this very earth. 
what we are encountering, or should I say what humanity is encountering now, is unprecedented. And as my statement quite rightly alluded to earlier, it is, in a, it is a once in a lifetime event. It happens, I think, about every hundred years or thereabout. We must take this very, very seriously and do all we can to protect our people, our children, our families, that we may remain safe to fulfill this very purpose for which God in heaven created us, which is to restore Biafra. We must pray. Chine ke nan ke pru mi hani non ne ke li gwe ma ke lo wa. O nye hon anya ya ne ben a de wa gu. Chine ke nan ku su ni len ke ndi aga. O nye hani yo ke reke na u isi ala nye. Mwa na madu na jage ma. O lu a ka ke pu yen bari gwe ne gosi. O nye wa nye bini gwe biko na nye na ryo ke kiwe batara nyo se nye ma ka. Kiwe bia kiwe zopo tandigi. Nu mo ki no ne koro we no na hum. I hi si ke we kari ya. Mpa bu di chiche we sebari ne di chiche. We da kwa sandige zebu bede ngozi. Ni hi no bu ke masin ke gin nan ke bere. Kanyi we se tuwa we na tan hum po chini ne. A kandiro we piagi dhanyi. Obo de kwensu bu zu Nigeria. Obo do chichiri nanke bera. Bo obo de kwensu. We de e kwensu hopo tala lugado ko we pota. We nwa nwa o chichiri ni mendo homo ki. Chine ke nanki gwani we na jogi ki nyagi we bata ni mendo anyi. No basu suye li gwe kanyi nasoro ki. Ni hinebi nondi mwosi bwa go kri kri. We we rasu sundi bo. We na kwisi ala nyagi. Hase ne de. Chine kena, onye kere li gwa no wane den so, malite no gugu ne den so, isi yin kendo ne den so, omogi yobu le jamato sunobu ya yirigi, nko jo me anye ge kele gin koma me anye we nye hanso go tuto, ni hinobu nane gin, bonye tosuri kwisi alan nanke bre dengo si, gyo wagi bonye notupu mbewe malite, gyo wagi bonye kere mwoke make wane, make otuto make hinye make abale, chine kena nke den so, eze ndi eze kwa kacha si heni nelu, anye na jage mambwe nene, anye na jage mano tutu we na jage mane hinye we na jage mana bale, ni hini no kwa 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 kese bube dengozi, eze ndi nso bikonu, bikonu mena nye bere, mena nye bere we sopota nye na kajo ihe, bia kwa notu waka kiwe mena nye meye, ni hina nyo mwanyo bano paho, awa nye ginye nene kanyi na gabi gambo fo de madu dendo, Gama nya kasita na magama Biko no nye wanyi na chine kena sa chane kanyi we di ocha Ki hugi we chane banyi no Ki hegi we mubane banyi no Kanko si kin ke puruche we One titindigi be Sinu lonke jom wogi jaka ki we hiwe Bu IPO bi no wani ne Chine kena nke bere dengo si ma Wom we bige bi biko no Bia ki we menen dige bere To madindini ne bundina kwa kwa hansongi Ni me mwoma ni me zioku Mbe ni ne kanyi na joge se Bebe dengo si bi Sini hojo, obode kwensi bizu ma wesu gandege. Ke hona nyagi we mubane banyi no ka biafra we bena mbwen kanyi di kisi we kwa kanyi ankwa. Kanyi we bulye yele we jage ma we gozi yegi. We wisi ala nyegi. We nuro gulu kuna rotu kudi kandi bosi we kwa do buweze bube den gozi. Ki yegi we patana lanso ki bo biafra. Ke si kwe tuwa nan ke bere den gozi. We me ke si nye we patana ni ma freka. Ni hi na biafra bo zon ki yege si we patana ni ma freka. Chine ke nan ki we. Ko tuto nan sopro ne e jamma na mbulye lu soso. We dure soso ke nan ke bere den gozi. Si ten e bige bi malo ne bige bi kanye na jogi. Ise. 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 I felt like praying in the language of the ancients. As I keep saying all the time, this is the language that the angels are worshiping God with right now in heaven. But it is worthy and right for us to praise Elohim always. I welcome you once again, I'm Nam I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra all over this very planet and by the very special grace of the same God we call upon all the time a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra and we must see this very divine project to its logical conclusion for there is no other way 
there is no other option. There is no other means left for us through which we can once again reestablish our presence on this very earth as the very chosen children of the Most High, the children of light only through Biafra. And that is precisely what we have come to do this very evening to propagate this very gospel, to preach the truth, to enlighten and to educate our people who otherwise have been subsumed in darkness and iniquity of the damnable zoological republic. Nigeria is a zoo. Anybody who do not know that will need his or her brain examined. This evening, we continue to dissect that abomination before God and before man. This evening, we continue to reiterate and to demonstrate quite capably, I must say, that Nigeria is an abomination before God in heaven. Anybody who rises up to say he or she is a Nigerian, there is no way that person can make heaven. It is impossible. As we shall, of course, quite vividly demonstrate as we proceed this very evening, it is now dawning on most people who hitherto we are slightly hesitant about conceding to the fact that the zoo is finished. Now it is very clear. Regardless of what they do in Delta State, we are sadly, if Anyokowa is helping the Janjaweed from the north to be arresting, to be molesting, and to be killing our people in Delta State, they are trying to use the cover of coronavirus to perpetrate atrocities and evil in Delta. We must hold them responsible. We must hold them responsible in Delta State. That very person who is there, that Janjaweed, that Fulani Alamajiri, that is the police commissioner, that very director of DSS in Delta, we would hold you directly responsible for all the atrocities you have been perpetrating against the children of Biafra in Delta State. The same Delta State that the zoo army cannot stop. They are, what should I say, they are terrorists. Arm, which is full and headsman Miet Yala, from killing people. They want to decimate our numbers. They want to frighten us into not putting up a resistance against the hordes of the army of darkness from the Sahel. But they have lost because we remain in Delta, because Delta is Biafra land. We are going to hold each and every one of you responsible. We will hold each and every, all those involved in the persecution of Biafrans in Delta. Do not think that because the world is battling coronavirus, that somehow they are no longer going to pay attention to all your human rights abuses, especially against we Biafrans. We are documenting very meticulously every act of impunity that the world may know and hold you to account at the appropriate time. We will not let go. We are not like any other set of people that you have ever seen. I am not like any other that may have come before me. Everybody responsible, each and every soul implicated in the persecution, arbitrary arrest, detention, summary execution of Biafrans will be held to account that is an assurance and they know it will happen because everything i say i'm going to do i do they know it is going to happen get your pen and paper ready this evening because today is going to be a lecture of immense proportion i must tell you this immense proportion we are live not just on my page on facebook which is the official mazen namde kano for your information there are many fake Facebook accounts, many fake ones that the Nigerian government deliberately created to divert traffic and attention away from this very truth that we preach on a regular and consistent basis. We have identified those fake pages and I want them to be published this evening that the world may know what the zoo is up to. This is what they do all the time. They have come into IPOB through the back door, some of them, pretending they are one of us, selling forms, 
and ID card when they know for sure that we do not have or entertain the use of forms in IPOB. There is no form in IPOB. They know we are about to launch our security outfit and they are going back and publishing, distributing and selling forms bearing BSS. But that is false. If you have wasted your money purchasing any form with BSS on it, you have been conned by the zoo government. The Nigerian government is busy collecting your names. I have warned you repeatedly, never ever put your name down on any piece of paper, on any form. Some of you will not listen. You won't listen. When they print those forms, they know how desperately we want Biafra. They know how we yearn for Biafra. That is why they keep tricking us all the time to give them our details. When they come in the night to arrest, to abduct you, nobody would know. Nobody would know. They are intensifying their persecution of Biafran's IPOB family, family members in Delta with the help of Delta State Governor, who incidentally is an Igbo man, Ifan Yokowa, that's his name, joining Fulani people to be killing his own people, defending Delta State. Defending Delta State, a governor in our land, they go to Mali, they go to all parts of the Sahel to dredge up the very worst of the worst of the Fulani Janjaweed Brigade. Bring them down to our land to rape our mothers, to abduct our daughters, to kill our fathers, to decimate and to render us homeless. Destroy our means of livelihood. The only people that have risen up to fight these people is IPOB. To resist them is IPOB. We are the ones resisting them. And what are these corrupt governors doing? Because they have promised all of them um, uh, vice presidency come 2099 or 2023. They have promised Mwike vice president. They have promised Okawa vice president. They have promised um, Dave Omahi vice president. They have promised uh, okay, Zipa as a vice president. The same vice presidency they have offered up to six of them. And in return, they are helping Fulani to persecute the same people that they, the zoo government, have been killing on a daily basis. I keep saying it all the time, but of course, some of you fail to listen. Only the Fulani have five terrorist groups. Five! You never hear about any northern governor persecuting Boko Haram, you never hear of any northern governor persecuting ISIS in West Africa, not minding that it was Buhari when he was alive, and the caliphate, including the Sultan of Sokoto, that formed Boko Haram. Everybody knows that. They have never gone after them. When he heard Riga tried to go after Boko Haram, they removed him. Jonathan foolishly removed him. Now they have come into our land. Do you know there are places in a Boeing state we can no longer go into? There are places in a Boeing that we can no longer go into inside a Boeing. These are full and settlements in a Boeing state. They are coming, we, as usual, we have gone blind and deaf until it is too late. Until it is too late. Look at what Ifan Yokowa is doing in Delta. Somebody must remind Ifan Yokowa. That all Jews of Carlo served the zoo called Nigeria today. He's in Kuja. Somebody must remind Ifan Yokowa in Delta State that Adaka Boro served Nigeria. Nigeria killed him. Somebody must remind Ifan Yokowa in Delta State that Kensera, we were served the North, served Fulani against his own people. They killed him. Somebody must also tell this very man called Ifan Yokowa that history will not be kind to him nor his family this persecution going on in delta state must come to an end they abducted ipob coordinator in delta state chukuma they abducted him he must be released i understand they have killed about four people already. They go to your workshop, they go to your office, and they abduct you. DSS and the police. DSS and the police. 
The same way they went to the business premises of John Chukuma, our Delta, John Chukuma is his name, and abducted him and wished him away. They think that because the world is focused on coronavirus somehow, we will not remember to mention it. But we are letting the world know, I am letting you find your call and know that you're holding Mazi John Chukuma. He is a Delta indigenous, he is a Biafran. His name is John Chukuma. He's Igbo. He is in Delta. You are holding him and you must release him. This is about the third time you've arrested him. Each time you people run out of money, you look for IPOB family members to arrest so you can make money through bail and all the rest of it. You share it into three. The, the prosecutor will get one third. The judge in the case will get a third. And the police and DSS will pocket the other. You people are making money with the lives of your own people. If I occur where you are the governor of Delta State, you are the one lamenting and complaining that full and terrorists are in your state, killing, maiming, and raping our mothers in that very state. IPOB is doing all it can to stop them. Because we are checkmating them successfully, that was why you connived. You connived with a full army, with a full army police commission. And I ask you, when are you people going to stop this, your stupidity, unmitigated disaster you're bringing upon yourselves because of the advancement of your career? Nam as I shall prove later in this very program, did the same nonsense. He saw the light. He decided to go back into darkness. Look at where we are today. Is anyone happy? Why is it that the same template that you people, if I your core, the same template you have followed over and over and over again and never yielded any tangible results is exactly the same thing you're replicating right now as a governor. You think that the Fulanis will love you people that drive cattle from place to place, very primitive people with no developmental or civilized outlook to their life. You seriously think that by persecuting your own people that they're going to love you and make you vice president. The same vice president they have promised weekend that he will be the running mate to Dambua. We know this nonsense. We know all these things. This is the thing about us. We are never consistent. I said it from the beginning of this very movement. We lack discipline and application. Discipline and application. Any day we remain disciplined, any day we apply that very thing that we preach, every day consistently, you will see that our lives will change. People come out in the open and they say things so that the public will love them. They go behind the back and they do something completely different and the opposite of that. People are coming, you know, all of these governors, they understand the mess we are in as a people. They know it. The Yorubas have realized they have come together. Not minding the terrorist attack that happened last week, which I will also delve into in a short while. But I want to deal with this issue of Ifanyo Kowa and what is happening in Delta State. The Nigerian police are perambulating, patrolling, arresting young men in Delta and killing them. They arrest and they kill. Now the world will not see it. Any day I come on air to tell them that we are going to retaliate, they start writing to every embassy in the world, saying this is what Namdekano said. Now they are abducting people and killing them. Nobody's talking. They've all gone moot. Now that Fulani people are making Nieti Allah with their terrorist uh, uh, squads are in our land, killing and maiming. All you do is you come to the, oh, uh, things are bad. Uh, something must be done about Nigeria. But the people defending you, which is IPOB, inside Delta State itself, the same way we fought in Anambra, the same way we fought in Ebony, and still fighting in Ebony till tomorrow morning. What you did was to organize with the people that are persecuting your people, with the masters of the terrorists, to come and arrest and kill your own brothers in Delta State. And you say you're a politician. This nonsense you're doing, you find your call, were those before you tried it. And they came out abject failure, all of them. Jim Wobo served him, no? Zeke brought him up, or he served him, no? After he left as the governor of, um, of Anambra State, they took his Savannah Bank. 
Some of you, you don't learn. You don't know anything because you're incapable of reasoning. You are all so foolish. I don't know why because you occupy a government house. Somehow you think they will love you. If you betray your people, they will love you. You are mad. They go behind your back, all of you, and they'll be laughing at all of you. Some of you think you're smart. As a governor, you sit in governor's lodge for eight years, stealing, accumulating funds for yourself and your family. One day you will answer for it. The commissioner of police, I want his name to be put everywhere. The police commissioner, I want his pictures everywhere. That is the man that is killing our people. I want the DSS director in Delta State. I need his pictures everywhere. I want his family address to be made known to all of us. I want where the, the man visits and his family to be made known to the whole world tonight, not tomorrow morning. It is an order immediately. I want to see the face of the Almajiri police commissioner in Delta State. I want to see the face of the DSS director in Delta State and also add the picture of Okawa that the world may know. Those killing innocent Biafrans in Delta because we said no to full terrorism in our land. The same people come Oh, we are dying. They are killing our women. We can no longer go to the farm. And IPOB is doing the only people doing something about it. Is it because we don't, we don't come on air every day to, to tell you what, what we've done or what we're about to do? All of you are there and are keeping quiet. So if IPOB we have to stop now, you still come online and say, what is IPOB doing in Delta? Now we are doing something. Okowa is sending Fulani terrorists in uniform to come and kill IPOB family members in Asaba, especially. They want to take it over. Some of you don't know. Go to Asaba after Head Bridge. If you pass on a child, after Head Bridge, cross the bridge and come over. He's, he's, he's all on the right and on the left, selling yam and plantain. Some of you are so blind you cannot see until what happened to you in Lagos happens, then your eyes... Even what happened to you, I'm not even sure you've learned anything from it. Some of that is a pipeline explosion. It was a terrorist, coordinated terrorist attack with multiple bombs. Multiple gravity bombs, if you do not know. It is called a gravity bomb, if you don't know. It can only be sourced by the army. Some of you do not know there was a Nigerian army that planted those bombs in Abolado to kill all of you. Because they know that Yoruba papers will not write about it. And the truth from the Yoruba papers write about it, the answer is no. They won't write about it. They will not. Do you know why they didn't write about it? Because it wasn't Yorubas that were killed. Those killed are Biafran, Zibo people especially. So who is going to defend you? you know, sometimes I, I can't understand why some people fail to reason. I don't know why they fail to reason. They are burning your everywhere is on fire. Every market is on fire all over the zoo called Nigeria. The markets that you own, yet you don't want to reason. There is no national, no sense of national urgency. That let me tell you, thousands of people died. The reason why their corpses were not recovered is because of the magnitude and the blast impact of the bomb that was used. It's called a gravity bomb. Go and research it very well. That's what they used. They vaporized human beings in a blood. Vaporization. You, where somebody was sitting before the bomb went off, if you go there, you cannot see anything anymore. From the same Nigerian army. Some of you don't know what the Fulanese have planned for you. Some of you, in your stupidity and your blindness, you continue to do the same thing over and over again, and they keep killing you because they know that we are so stupid. So, not all of us, of course, not IPOB. Heaven forbid. Those of you being killed. Very, very foolish. I will play a clip for you in a short while. I made that video or that clip in Italy, in Venice, very close to Padova. I, I read Merchant of Venice as, um, as a class three student when I was at Government College, Omar. Merchant of Venice. Most of my peers read it with me then. It was, um, it was a compulsory course, literature in English, English literature. I went to the house. I don't know that the book was actually modeled on a real life figure. I went to the man's house, Shylock, in Venice, a very wealthy man.
you know the funniest thing? He was Jewish, a Jewish man, very wealthy. And he lost everything. I made that very clip, and I'll play for you in a, in a very short while. And I said it. I was, this was, I made this clip in the year 2013. Or somebody, either 2012 or 2013, I can't remember anymore. I was touring Europe. I went to Italy. I was hosted very well by Mike Kelly, a very good man. Uh, IPOB national coordinator then. He didn't let me, he didn't want me to leave Italy. But I, I stayed with them for nearly two weeks in Italy, touring everywhere and preaching this very gospel. They took me to that very place. Unbelievable. I made that, I said it, I said that all of you building your houses in Lagos, in Kanu, and in Kaduna, and in Abuja, that you're all very, I said it in that, I'll play it in a very short, short while. And today it's exactly what I said many, many, many years ago, 2013 or 2012. I can't be quite specific. I don't know. It's been a long time ago. The same thing as is happening now. Everything I have told you always come to pass. That is how you know people that are operating under the mandate of heaven and those who are operating under the mandate of a native doctor somewhere in a remote forest in West Africa. That's how you know. Everything I say, they come, I said everything, I'll play for you in a short while. But we are bringing to the knowledge of the world what E. Fanny Okowa, the governor of Delta State, is doing with his terrorist friends, Alamajiri, the Janjaweed, who are in police and in DSS. They have come to take over our land. We are under pressure on four fronts, if, in case you don't know. All the, what I call the old border towns are in serious danger of collapsing to full on hegemony. Ebo is under pressure. Anambra is constantly under pressure. Enugu is under pressure. And so is Delta. And do you know why they're all under pressure? All these states I have mentioned, they have Mieti Allah as part of the government. I know some of you are shocked, but it's true. The same Mieti Allah responsible for killing us in Nimbu, Ozo One, everything that is happening in EZ, everything that is now happening in Delta, what happened in Anambra uh, West, everything, the same people that come, destroy crops in the farm, rape our mothers, kill us, every black, the same people, your so-called governors, assimilated them into their governance structure. Sometimes it, they say truth is stranger than fiction. This is what is happening in our land. Right now, as I preach this very gospel to you this evening, they have gone to Lagos, in a place called Abulado, they have killed our people. Look at the level of devastation. Devastation that they wrought on our people. Some people can no longer, people can no longer mourn because you don't know who died and who survived. A lot of the people basically vanished. It's called vaporization. They were vaporized because this is a very powerful bomb. Four bombs, four. Four gravity bombs. Four. They go and they say, give us military weapons. We want to fight Boko Haram. The same Nigerian army is planting all these weapons in predominantly Biafran areas to depopulate, to kill, and to take over our land, our properties, and our businesses. That's what is happening. As it's happened to the Jews, as I told you in 2013. So it's happening to us today. And why is it happening? Because some of you do not... There are these people, these bastards born by Fulani fathers during and after the war. It's them. Born of wayward mothers. It's them. Look at the way we are being killed. Look at how we are being slaughtered all over the place. Even our own land is under pressure. Only IPOB is holding the fort. Without IPOB by now, there will be no Biafra. No Southeast, no South South. All the nonsense you're talking will be gone. You will become another Elorin. 
Look at the way that the people, the Yoruba Muslims from Iloran, they are the worst breed of Yoruba people. The worst, the very worst. I tell you the truth. I don't mince words. I speak the truth. Go and research, you know, the Akintolas of this world. Go and do your research. Go back to history. You will confirm that whatever I'm telling you is the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Complete truth. I'm not diluting anything. What they have succeeded in doing is making some of you to reason like Yoruba and Lauren. That's what they have done. The more they conquer you, the more you love them. The more they conquer you, the more you love them. That is the level of stupidity in some of us, especially those in Lagos, in Abuja, and in Kaduna, and in Kanu. It's happened. I warned you, and worse, write it down there, the other worse is coming. They use what they call suicide, we use what they call shock inoculation. That is what the British advise the Fulanese to use. And that's what they're using and it's working perfectly for them. Once they commit a heinous crime, an abominable crime, the outrage and the revulsion will be so high. You know what they do? They now reduce their hand a little bit. And their subsequent atrocities won't be as, 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 as dreadful in magnitude as the first one. So you will say, oh, uh, uh, at least it wasn't as bad as the first one. And they take your lives over. That is what is happening. That is what is happening. Our intelligence is correct. Everything we tell you is correct. Everything I sit here to preach, wherever I am in the world, anything I tell you comes to pass. Exactly like that. Let us not waste time and go to that same clip I made many, many years ago. Please, uh, Amaka, I want it posted everywhere. The clip I made many, many years ago about what is happening to you today in Lagos. I, I'm not on back. I don't, I don't go to and meet you full and people at night. They give me money. I talk rubbish. I come and say, oh, it's a, it's a prophecy. Rubbish. I, I have evidence. I don't, I don't believe in, in what I, I said. And, oh, I said, no, I, you will see it with the two eyes. Evidence. Very clear. Incontrovertible. Somebody kindly, I don't, you know, IPOB, we are too formidable. Somebody dug up this very video. I never even knew it ex still existed. I will play it for you. The voice is slightly dim sometimes, but I will try and play it for you. I'm sure you'll make sense of it. I'll play it for you. I'll play it for you. Um, of, um, the child of the merchant of Venice, he was a Jewish man. This is an object lesson to the evil fools and idiots who are building their palaces in Kano, in Medivri, in Lagos, in Abuja. That this building here was built by a Hebrew, a Jewish man, Shiloh of the Shakespeare fame, Merchant of Venice. This is his home. We are here in Padova. I'm on the kind of course, and these are our people that brought me to this place. We came, Radio Biafra is in, um, we are here in, in Italy, touring Italy. And over there, all the houses you can see, we are built by Jews here. If you go there today, you will see no Jewish person there. It's all been taken from them. This is the home of the man that there was so much jealousy against this man in Europe that they decided to write Shakespeare himself wrote the Merchant of Venice. If you look here, that is the canal right across where the cyclist is going is the canal that used to bring in his wares, his merchandise all the way from the city of Venice that is just down the road from there. So what we are going to do is to attempt to go in. We are going to remind our people that it's necessary for our people to be prudent with their sense. I recorded this many, many years ago, 2012 or 2013. Somebody should please correct me. I want our people to be prudent. You know what they said? His head speech. He doesn't know what he's saying. He wants to divide Nigeria. Go and say that to the to the to the children that will not get a befitting burial. My parents died and at least I buried them. I was able to mourn them and bury them. There are people that were people that died in Abuladu that nobody even knows if they were there when the bombs went off or not. They cannot be seen. They've been literally wiped. Ask yourself how many bodies we are recovered from those homes and those schools. Ask yourself this question. To tell you the, the 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 power of the bomb that they detonated at that very place. How many bodies were recovered? 
You can see people crying and saying, oh, uh, uh, Chinedu was there. I saw Chinedu and the mother and the father, they were there. But nobody can see them again. What vaporization? Because the blast was so huge that it, it tore the flesh into pieces and scattered it everywhere. Blown away to thy kingdom come. I warned them. I warned them. I warned them in 2012, 2013. I've been warning them, warning them, this is going to happen. I am very precise. I tell you what is going to I will tell you exactly what is going to happen. I don't believe in using, you know, um, a general language, you know, or generalizing my, 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 my prediction. I tell you what is going to happen. With every clarity and certainty, I tell you what is going to befall you. The same way that I said to people of Delta State today, if you allow Okawa to continue the persecution of IPOB, I will give the order for IPOB not to defend Delta State anymore, and I give you only six months and Delta State will fall into the hands of the Alamajid. It doesn't matter who you, if you like, you try me. I am telling you, if Okawa does not stop his cooperation with Miyeti Allah, and the full terrorists in uniform in the state. I will give the order that IPOB should stop defending Delta and Delta will fall within six months. And then you turn around and say, oh, but IPOB was there. You've been saying uh, you protect us. But now that uh, a so-called Igbo man, Ifan Yokawa is there, bringing his friends, all these perpetrators of iniquity, into Delta, you won't say anything. The same way that I warned you. I warned you many, many years ago that your lives, all of you building and constructing in Lagos, that you are foolish. I did not just say it that you are foolish. I said they will take it from you. And you know what they have done? The army have said, army, a Nigerian army, and the Nigerian government, uh, including the, the uh, Elorin, the Yoruba Muslim man in, I think he's the governor of Lagos State. You know what they said? After they killed people, slaughtered children, you know what they said? Federal government of Nigeria is now acquiring Abulado as a federal government property. Can you believe that? The same thing that I told you will happen in 2013. The same thing I told you would happen to you in 2013 is now happening before your eyes. So you can see it. I have the video to prove it. I have the video. I was actually looking a, a lot more handsome then, and my bed wasn't very gray, and my hair wasn't receding as fast as it. You know, too much stress. Um, um, I'm trying to think of Biafra every blessed day. It's a very stressful, stressful thing to do, honestly speaking. Thinking of ways to make sure that Biafra is restored as quickly as possible. I was relatively young compared to now. Go and look at it. I have the video. It's not somebody saying, oh, I, I said it. No, I have the video to prove it. I told you it was going to happen. And it has happened. Has it not happened? It has happened. Now, let me also let the world uh, understand what is happening in this same place. And I'm, I can put that very video on my wall. And everywhere, I want it everywhere. There are two videos showing you the level of devastation. The level of devastation to tell you that the Fulani terrorists are heartless. Them and the army, the police, the DSS, they are all the same terror gang. The same. And let me warn Yorubas. You may think that, that, that that's too stupid, the Yoruba girl that used to work for Harry Potter. I don't know what her name is, saying that, uh, that uh, Jubil is not Buhari. I'm looking at her. So now she doesn't talk very much anymore. Maybe she's from a Lauren as well. The same thing will happen to you, Yoruba. Write it down as your media is keeping quiet. Of course, I, I, I exempt Punch newspaper and AIT to an extent. As they are keeping quiet, thinking, oh, oh they, they're killing evils in Abulado. We will get our land back. They bought it from us after so foolishly. They bought it from us. They're going to take it back in, in connivance with the federal government. I want to work on knife with Gowan. Yoruba, what did you achieve? You, after all the conniving, Awolowo was the only civilian vice president to a military head of state in the history of Africa. Then, they promised him everything they are promising Okowa today. 
We will make you this. We will make you that. After go on, I will always you. The same trick they played on Awolo, they played on Asiki, they're still playing on all of you till today. But you cannot see it. Well, once in a while, they will bring out somebody like Obasanjo, give him the presidency uh, accidentally, somebody like Jonathan. They will say, oh, don't worry. Uh, don't listen to them. They can't, can't you see Obasanjo? And we allow them to be there. Do you think that Fulanis are stupid? They know that once the presidency leaves them, things cannot be the same anymore. They know that very well. The same trick they played on Awolo, what they played on Aziki, where all of you are falling for it like idiots that like you are. But not IPOB, thankfully. Not IPOB. Let me show the world, or should I say, play for you what transpired. And you see the level of devastation. They say it's pipeline. Can you imagine a journalist that will go to maybe Winner's Chapel or go to any of those Pentecostal churches and say they pray to Jesus Christ? And you come out and you see the truth. I cannot write the truth. You says, which pipeline can cause such devastation? Which pipeline? Even the pipeline in Russia, the biggest gas pipeline, cannot cause such a huge area or leave a huge area desolate. Go and look at it. Let me play for you. I think this was from Guardian newspaper. None of them said it's, a, it's, an, it's an Igbo area. That he was being killed. No, of course not. Something happened to the Jews in Europe. When Hitler was killing them, they said, oh, no. oh leave it. It's uh, people that live in that part of uh, Warsaw. They're like, oh, no, it's not. Uh, they're not targeting the Jews. Until six million were killed. Then their eyes opened. The funniest thing is that they have killed five million of us before. We did nothing. We went back to the same Abuja, the same Medugli, the same Kaduna, the same Lagos. The same thing is happening now. I am not saying that Yorubas and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, Biafra should not cooperate. That's not what I'm saying. But everything must be based on transparency and truth. Honesty. Honesty is the foundation of such a relationship. Now understand this very clearly. Very, very clearly. Our lives are in danger. They are using the cover of coronavirus to commit unspeakable atrocities on the ground. As they are advancing, day and night they are advancing. Every blessed day they are advancing. Nigerian army is working for them. These terrorists, they are, they are all in the same camp. They planned it very well. Nigerian army, Nigerian police, DSS, everybody is working towards this one foreignization agenda. By the time you realize it is too late. Because they are buoyed up by what, is, what happened in, in Lorin and to an extent in Eboin. That if you conquer them well enough, they will support you. You know that uh, Stockholm Syndrome? Uh, the love you have for somebody who is persecuting you. That's what they're counting on. But at least maybe they never counted on IPOB coming. Or our resolutions. Let me play for you what is happening in Lagos. Where they kill our people. Victims count losses. Destruction. Wholesale destruction. In front of my compound, where the kids are inside the house, so immediately I had a shout outside. My son said he's going to church, and the little one said he's not going. So I was like, Okay, you go while the little one stay with me at home, then we'll go for the next mass. The only thing I could see was a hard noise from outside. People were shouting, Help, help, help. It was not up to 20 seconds, there was a heavy explosion. So when I went to pay can you hear that? Everything I tell you is correct. There was an explosion, the first one. People were screaming, help, 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 help. That's what they do. They now detonated another one. People don't reason. They don't think. People know, this UG, black people, black. God, why? Why can't black people reason? This is what a journalist that claims he or she is God-fearing, will sit down and write and say, it's a gas, uh, gas line, it's a gas, the, that the gas exploded and the other cylinders people's houses started exploding. There was no emergency debate in their useless Senate. Nobody discussed it because the papers never wrote about it. Everybody went to sleep and it's gone. People are dead. Children are missing. They will never be buried. Never. Let's continue listening to, to the lady narrating her ordeal so there are people can can uh, can some people actually learn sometimes i wonder can they really seriously learn let's listen who i was asking 
the whole building collapsed on my children. So I called people to come and help me bring out the block so that I could bring them out. Immediately I came outside, I saw heavy smoke upset. The smoke was much. Rushing inside, the building were collapsing in heavy, heavy form. I was, ah, there is no way out to, the next thing we saw was fire all over. We could not bring anything out. When I was looking front in, right there, I saw a car get going up in flames. So I was like, ah, there are people inside this car. I never knew it was Lim Dave's school, the private school. The son that came from America that wants to got married, the man and the son and the wife, all of them got born inside the car. The whole building collapsed. So I called people to help me out and they bring out our things. They bring out my children so we now run away. Getting to the other point there, we saw the children. Some, their head is off. Why some? They, are, they cut off their two hands and legs. All the children in Bethlehem College, they were badly injured. Some reverend sisters were involved. They lost their lives. Many people lost their life in the incident. So we just find our way at the back of that plaza. That's where we escaped yesterday. That is how they massacre you because when they come to your villages and kill IPOB, you keep quiet. When they, when they persecute those who are fighting for your survival, you keep quiet. That's why they did this to you. And they will continue. Do you think they're going to stop? How many years ago did they attack the Catholic Church in Madala? Have they stopped? After all the outcry and all the nonsensical noise and crocodile tears of your governors and your politicians, those you call your leaders, what happened? The Fulani terrorists intensified their slaughter. They intensified it because they will never stop. Do you think they're going to stop? You're insane. They will never ever stop. They will keep hunting you down and killing you every blessed day. The more they kill you, the less they report it. Until they will stop reporting it. That was the trick that Britain taught them. Britain told them that the only way to do this is to deny them the oxygen of letting the world know what you're doing. And luckily for the Fulani people, all the media in Nigeria are concentrated in the hands of the Yoruba. And most of them are Yoruba Muslim. That is the problem you have in Nigeria. When the unfortunate incident of the death of the daughter of uh, Fasoranti happened, it was everywhere. Every Yoruba paper carried it, front page news. Everybody, there was widespread condemnation. But I'm asking you to go and look at their coverage of what happened at Abulado. Where thousands perished. I said thousands perished. Their livelihoods gone. Well, I'm, I'm building a house in Lagos. <laughs> I'm living at uh, at uh, at uh, I'm living at um, Okukumaiko. What's it going? I, more is coming. Oh. More is coming. The reason why people maybe sometimes I can understand the apathy of some people is that our people don't listen. They don't listen. Sometimes we reason as if we are not normal. Look at what is happening. In, in Delta State. Can you, can, you, can you believe such nonsense? Are you telling me that a governor in the North, let's say Adamawa or Bruno governor, or maybe uh, Katsina, or maybe Masarawa, that people will come from the, that Biafran, terrorists will come from Biafra land and go to Masarawa and be killing people? And then the Masarawa governor will come out and say, okay, where are those resisting uh, uh, these terrorists? Let's go and kill them. That is what your governors are doing. They are there making stupid speeches from their offices, swinging around, saying things that they feel sometimes you want to hear. You know, swinging around. Oh, we are going to form security outfit in uh, November of 1592. We are going to form one. Oh, don't worry, it's coming. Oh, it's coming. Some of you idiots. Oh, he has spoken. Oh, did you hear him? What the governor said? He, his Excellency. <laughs> Whilst his full on comrades are slaughtering you. May the good Lord have mercy upon your soul. It's not finished. There's another clip as, as well I want to play. I'm sure most of you may have seen it. But it is good to remind all of you the level of stupidity 
we, we are swimming through right now because of those you i told you so all of your so-called of course with the exception of our body they were brought out by the awful and uh, godfathers all of them the awful and God, all of them all of them i don't know that uh, uh, perhaps they i don't know what it is is it in, maybe it's indomi i suspect indomi indomi there's something wrong with indomi the same way that I suspect fluoride, you know, fluoride toothpaste. You know, they said that what is happening in the Western world in the 60s and 70s wouldn't have happened. There would be so much moral indignation by the people that, that are not rising. But you know what fluoride does? You don't know what fluoride does. And even in the UK, they put fluoride in water, in drinking water. They say it's to make the teeth very strong, but of course not. Fluoride makes you very docile, makes you very weak. You are no longer critical. You cannot rise up anymore to fight for what you believe is right. There is another clip. Lamentation everywhere in Lagos. But I warned you in 2013, you will lament, but nobody will come to your rescue. I said no. And the government is going to take the land from them. And the people are saying, one Nigeria. We're in Nigeria. Let's move Nigeria forward. Let's move Nigeria sideways. Let's move Nigeria a bit to the left. Let's move it a bit to the right. Let's move it up a bit. They are killing you. As somebody is telling you, let's, that's something that is killing you. Let's move it forward. Somebody, unbelievable. Let's play another one so that the world can hear and know that our position is always vindicated. You know, they said that history will always vindicate the just. When I was saying this thing in 2013, I'm sure some people thought I was a madman, that I would never be vindicated. But today I have roundly vindicated. Roundly. Anybody doubting anything I say is a lunatic. If you doubt anything I say, anybody, forget about um, um, Congress, um, um, forget about those idiots. Anything I tell you, ask them anybody, has anybody been so accurate with their prediction before? I, in the whole of Africa, I, if you show me anybody whose predictions are as accurate and verifiable as mine, I will, I will stop what I'm doing. I will stop it. Show me there is no human being alive who hasn't been born. Everything I tell you is true. Everything I open my mouth and I say is correct because heaven directs me on what to say. Heaven will tell me what, and I will tell you it will come to pass in front of your eyes. Not behind you, you will see it happening. If there is anybody who is as accurate as I have been with my predictions, bring out the person, I will stop, I will resign as IPOB leader no human being the, the, the whole in fact the whole world no human being there is no single soul no human being in africa in the zoo called nigeria anywhere on can match the degree of accuracy of our prediction no human being can what i told you i i i see exactly what i told you in 2013 is now happening let's listen here Pure attack on Ibo is saying. Yes. Are still inside the building. Go back, go back. Did you hear what he said? He said he's, he's starting, he's now advising himself. No more building in Lagos, in the west and the north. I told our people that Jews tried the same nonsense you're doing. Their friends, Igbos especially, Jews did the same rubbish. You see, all this nonsense. Oh, Oh, we are going to be the premier of Austria. We are going to be the prime minister of um, of, of Norway. The same nonsense you're doing. It did start today. You know, history has a very funny way of repeating itself. I remember one wise man 
founded the Zionist movement, traveled to Austria and spoke to a very prominent Jewish man. He said to him, I am the prime minister of Austria now. Our people are climbing. The same rubbish you hear from these morons all over the zoo. The man lost his life in Auschwitz with, along with his family. He was, he was gassed to death. We are hated the same way the Jews are hated for no reason. We are blessed because of the blessing God gave to us. That is why they hate us. Some of you claim I'm a Christian, I'm a this, I'm a that. You don't read the scriptures. You don't read. The reason why his brothers hated him, Joseph, was because his father loved him. That is the only reason for the hatred. The reason why some people say, oh, now the candidate is, now they can stop him, is because they know that I love their friends and they love me. That's all. That's because I've done, I don't know who they are. Once you're loved by a superior power, those around you will hate you. Even in families, it happens. Well, once your mom is favorite or dad is favorite, that's the way people look at you. That's the way it is. We are the favorite of God. We have messed up, that is true. We are useless sometimes, that is true. But we remain his favorites. That is why they will always hate us. There is no place like home. No place in the world. Today, today are they killing Jews anymore? Do you kill Israelis anymore? I'm asking you. If you kill Israelis somewhere, Mossad will go the next day and kill your entire family. So you, you will stop. But now they're killing us. The same thing I said in 2013 is what a trader is now saying in Lagos. That there are corpses in the house. Oh, Zunde model. Dead bodies, they cannot move them. And instead of the, the zoo government that they claim that they are serving to come and be sympathetic to them, what Nigeria said was, we will take over this land from you. I don't mind that you're grieving or you're burying people or you can't even find them, but we are going to take the land. And nobody commented. That useless station called Channels, nobody. Some people are evil. Some people are evil. I, I, I said this. God looked at the heart of a black man and said, no, these people, there's something wrong with them. Instead, he blessed other people, Caucasians, the, the, the Anatolians, the, the, the Asians. So there's something wrong with them. Their heart is as, is black as charcoal. I asked myself, is there any reason why Yoruba papers will not carry the truth about what happened in Abulado? Why wouldn't they write the truth? People are dying. They said there are children still inside the inside the, the some of the buildings, dead bodies still there. And what the government wants is um, let us go and take over the land from them. Very very sad indeed. We must continue. All the leaders you have in Biafra land, by which I mean southeast and south south, because some newspapers are very good at misquoting me. I issued a statement on coronavirus earlier this evening. And instead of writing exactly what I said, they have now said, uh, Nam the County give advice to deal with the Southeast. No, I was talking about all Biafrans. Idoma, Igede, Efiki, Bibio, Izon, our people in Ebanke, Urobo, Isoko, Ishekiri. These are the people I'm talking about, not just, I didn't say Igbo. But they keep twisting it. Something is wrong. They keep twisting. They must twist it. Have you ever heard about Fulani shouting Fulani Fulani before? That was the... Why can't you people learn? What is wrong with your brain? The Fulani speak Hausa language. They don't complain. They don't complain. They're in charge of everywhere. They don't complain. You have Hausa. You have Nupe. You have Kanuri. You have uh, Bama. You have uh, Wagi. You have all people in the north under one Fulani hegemon. How can Fulani come out and say, oh, we are fighting for Fulani? They are fighting for the whole north because all their interests are linked. Why is it in the south we fall for this nonsense over and over again, this dichotomy? That was what finished us in the south. That was what finished the east. Once they cut you out and say, you are south, south, you are south, 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 you are south, 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 and God knows you. What else? They can come in. They can kill you. If you want to participate, if you want to join your people to repel the, the invaders, they say, oh, no, but you're not part of us. You are from uh, Southeast. The statement I made was for all Biafrans all over the world. 
all their friends. <coughs> all IPO be all over the world. Excuse me. All IPO be all over the world. I don't know why we never learn. I don't know when we are going to learn. The international community must hold Nigerian government to account for the genocide going on in Delta State and across the entire South, but the East especially. They have refused. The so-called government they are interested in their families and what they can get from governance, not what they can do for you. It is only IPOB that can save you. No order, no order. I keep saying no order. Our message to these terrorists and their sponsors remains the same. That we shall continue to resist them, as we are doing in Delta State. Any day, if I, I will give Delta people, they are our traditional rulers and our elders in Delta, the opinion leaders in Delta, to give Okowa 14 days to apologize to IPOB publicly. If he doesn't do it, I will withdraw IPOB volunteer command from Delta, and you see what Flanny will do to you in Delta State. Then your eyes will clear. Remember that everything I've said to you before has come to pass. Remember that very well. Not tomorrow you'll be shouting, oh, but, but where is IPOB? That, that, no, nothing is happening. They're not doing anything. I am warning you now. Okowa must apologize. He must apologize for what he is doing. The zoo is bad. I have left because what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> there was something that uh, <laughs> I came across on Namda Zikiba said. I, I've read it over a hundred times. I, can't, I couldn't believe it. Over a hundred times. I've seen it, but I can't believe it. But I'm going to read it for you tonight so you will understand what is happening. Somebody called Ogun said there is no compulsion to remain united without restructuring. He is an elder statesman. He's a former senator. And yet, here, Okun, he served in the Senate between 1999 and 2003. He served within this period. And um, very sadly, he was the publicity secretary for PDP for a while. He spoke on the state of the zoo called Nigeria. He is from what they call South South. The people that go on created and said, You are rivers and you're cross river, you are South South. You are not related to the Igbos, you have nothing to do with them. And some of them foolishly, I say it all, foolishly and hopelessly agreed. After the war, they gave <clears throat> houses belonging to Igbo people in Igbo that they call Port Harcourt, to some Ikwere, to some Ikwere families. But there was no abandoned property in the north. The reason why they did it was to divide us even more. So, so that the man, in order to keep a property that is not his, will say, oh, I'm not evil. Do you understand the trick? It's a very simple game. It's, a very, it's divide and rule. It's very neat and very simple. Just like when the white man came, he would go to a village and he would pick somebody and say, you're the warrant chief of this village. Forgetting all the, all the traditional precedent and how traditional rulers are appointed. That's, that's what happened. They will come and they will say to you, oh, uh, I'm not Igbo. The reason why an Igbo man will be not Igbo is because the property he's living in does not belong to him. Because if he says he's Igbo, that means that it's an abomination to take over your brother's landed property. It's an abomination in Igbo culture. In order to justify that the money that you went to school with, you were trained with money gotten from a stolen property. You say, oh, we are from Benin. You know, if you come from Benin, there will be no, con you don't, you don't have conscience. That's why all that nonsense. We are from Akaraka in Benin. All that crazy, we know, we know the history. If they want to teach them the history. We are all one people. And of course, when, as soon as Biafra comes, we will be able to do things differently. We will be able to do things properly the way it ought to be. We will be able to do things differently we will be able to do things the way it should be done. The way it should be done. I have been sent something today, now, right now, that um, it, it is finally open that Jubril is not Buhari. We'll get to that later. I have a, a section of that coming up. <laughs> they've, they've, 
they have now admitted it <laughs> that uh, <laughs> Jubril is not Buhari. You know, I'm never wrong. They, I am not wrong. Some people will say, oh, but he, he should be a bit modest and admit that he's wrong. So I am not wrong. Before I come on air, I pray. I pray seven times every day. Are you aware of that? Seven times a day. I pray seven times a day. I am under divine mandate. Everything I tell you is the truth. Garuba Shehu have admitted, actually admitted, under, I think, is, I won't call it cross-examination, that uh, Jubril is not Buhari. It's very clear and neat and clean. The whole world has seen. And I, 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 th I, I thank uh, Simon Ekba for actually bringing it up. I think he's the, uh, Simon Ekba does this <laughs> very brilliant video analysis, which I think is a very, is a very, is a, very, is a new genre, so to speak, in this propagation. I think he's doing a very good job. And may he continue and let the demon not go into him. He should remain focused applied and disciplined you know our problem is lack of application and discipline once you're disciplined and you apply yourself dutifully and diligently uh, the end result is always assured is victory uh, now they have admitted that um that jubril is different from buhari they've admitted it that's what they're saying but we'll continue somebody from the south south is now saying that oh give us the structuring or uh, there's no compulsion for the nation to work but when full and it was using you did not know when they come to give you pipeline security, hey, can you please guide, guide this pipe from from LLM to, uh, to to Obibo? I'll give you money. You never ask yourself, but who actually who is actually benefiting from the oil world? They're all from the north. All you do is security guard. And when I tell you, oh, come, my brother, let us be, let us repel these infidels. You say, oh no, I, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not a Biafra. Oh, I'm not, uh, they say, I'm from Bini, I'm from Akaraka, from Bini. <laughs> your name is, uh, is Chibi Kamej. You say you're from, you're, you're, you're from Bini, from Akaraka, from Bini. <laughs> Stupidity is a disease. I will never get tired of saying this. Ken Serawuwa was at my alma mater, Government College of Mwahi. Of course, the finest uh, British-run um, um, boarding school you had in the entire East. Of course, as Ziki West said that, I'll refer to that later on. He went there on scholarship. Ken Serawuwa, respected and loved at Government College of Mwahi. Any, any Omwahian will tell you about Erekosima House. Erekosima. He was a principal. Government College of Mwahi. A John Erekosima. Oh dear me, these people just came into us and divided us so much. They, they want to bring that nonsense before. Oh, I, I'm an Ambra, I, I'm your Imo. IPOB came and destroyed all that rubbish. Do you hear that nonsense again? Oh, you're from Enugu. Oh, you're from Ebony. I'm from a... Do you hear that rubbish in IPOB? We are one family. One family. In in Cross River, they have a, 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 a fraternity, a cult. We have a, a where we come from. Everybody is the same. The same the same family we wear, the same thing that our Abio wears, that Hudo Emmanuel is wearing, the same thing that I wear. The same thing, the same cap, our woolly hat, the The same Okonko they have in Anang is in my village, Okonko. The same Okonko is in my village. The same fraternity. The same order you have. In Ekom, in Oron, it's the same people we have in my village. And you left all of your people and you say, oh, a Fulani man from, from Mali is better. He's my brother. Lord, have mercy upon some of you. Lord, have mercy upon some of you. They have admitted that uh, Jubril is not uh, the same as, uh, <laughs> as, uh, as Buhari. Of course, as I know they would over time. Of course, they're going to admit it. Why wouldn't they admit it? Why would they not admit it? Because here we preach the truth. Everything I tell you is correct. They are borrowing money. They have left out of it. They are bombing you, killing you in Lagos. The money from the so-called Nigeria you're not getting. Whereas the oil comes from your land, the gas comes from your land, the full and it contributes nothing to the economy. I have asked somebody many several times, what is the contribution of Bauchi State to the coffers of Nigerian economy? The answer is zero, nothing. 
They say they grow yam and they grow onions and they grow tomatoes. All that has been blown aside. It's something that we grow in Asuka. So what do you contribute to nothing? You take the oil from my land, the gas from my land, you go and borrow money to mortgage the future of children based on the produce coming from the land of Biafra. And yet, the Biafrans are excluded from it. And so, oh, but they gave some to South South as if you have not. It, when you go to school to study the history of colonialism in those days when they taught history in schools, the first thing you learn is the British divide and rule. That's how they work. Divide and rule. What is happening in Hong Kong and China, in Pakistan, in India, in Bangladesh, in Kashmir? Divide and rule. Why can't you people reason? You can't think for yourselves. They have run the zoo to the ground. Fulani have destroyed the Nigerian economy to the extent that the Senate president, one man called Lawan, this is according to their news, helped Nigeria out of poverty. So you can't help yourself out of poverty. But you say you are matured, you are grown up, you can stay on your own. Why don't you ask Britain to come and colonize you again? Help Nigeria out of poverty. Senate president begs World Bank. People without shame, no honor, no dignity, no pride, nothing. People without honor. People without honor. That's what's happening to them. People without honor. That is what is happening to them. The zoo itself. And they want to compete with IPOB when they know they can never ever, they can never ever compete. I wrote and I said to Jubril, come out and address the people. Every day Trump will come out. Every Every head of state, even those without any recorded case of coronavirus, out in public. Every day, they will they will they will dress down. Every president in Africa, they will dress down. They, they will answer questions from journalists. This one never says anything. If not ordinary greeting, uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen, is written for him. Ordinary ladies and gentlemen. He has to look in the book to read it out. If, good, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. He is reading it because his jubilee is not book hard. Everybody knows that. You can't recover from a brain tumor. Everybody knows that. You cannot recover from an illness and you claim you've forgotten your mother tongue. After all, the English that you're speaking, you never knew how to speak English before. So how come all of a sudden you're getting English language is your tongue for food that you forgot? I shall have told you severally that this man is not Buhari. But you don't want to listen, do you? None of you wants to listen. And now it is very clear. Address the nation. They are begging him. The same Senate that is begging for money to save itself is begging. Please address the nation. Come and address the nation. He cannot address the nation because he is not Buhari. Common sense. He is now the same height as uh, Garobashir. Today he's young, tomorrow he's uh, looking like a 15 year old. The other one is looking like a 14 year old. Nobody knows who is. And all of you are just taking in this scam. No wonder they were saying, oh, oh, be, be a fraud. Be a fraud is a scam because they are covering a big, they are covering scam. So by focusing attention on IPOB, they, they fully. All the, all the Fulanese need to count upon is the, is the envy and hatred of some Yorubas against. It was naturally that's all that's how they survive because sometimes I, I, I seriously don't think that some Yoruba journalists are objective some of them are not the objective ones you know some are not and that is why cooperation between East and West is difficult very very difficult because they cannot uh, some of them cannot throw away that you know toga of um, of envy if I can put it that way I tell you the truth I don't lie. I don't sugarcoat anything. I, I, I speak the truth. I tell you what is going to happen before. I tell you the fact. You may not like it, but upon reflection, in the quiet of your room, you will come to consider correct. There should be cooperation between the East and the West. It's not happening. Why? Because uh, segments of Yoruba journalism, they're just horrible, horrible people. Horrible. They know that in every other... Can you imagine if it is Jonathan? Jonathan saying, oh, I will not address the nation on Corona. Hey, Yoruba media will eat him alive. They will eat him raw, alive. But because they have frightened all of you with terrorism. Basically, 
reduced you to nothing. That is why you can't speak. Oh, he, 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 uh, 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 you know this group that uh, Lorota uh, on chair runs on on social media. They are attack squad. I think they are now dwindling in number anyway. Oh, uh, uh, what is he? What is him saying? Anything got to? Is he going to stop the virus? Can you believe people? They don't know the meaning of leadership. They don't know the meaning of democracy. They don't know what is called accountability because the only thing they know to do is to move cattle from place to place. They know nothing. That is not. I keep saying it. They say, oh, you're being racist. I am not being racist. I'm not uh, denigrating anybody. I'm telling you the pure fact of life. A democratically elected president cannot address the country in a time of pandemic. Pandemic. Oh. Then when are you going to address them? When will you address them? That is the meaning of democracy. Tell us what you're doing. You owe it to the people. If you claim you are Buhari, come out and speak. And take questions from journalists. You, they cannot do it. And you have your bad journalists. That stupid girl that used to work for Sahara Reporters. I've forgotten her name. That was defending Jubril. It has happened now. I've just been sent a clip now that, Ju that uh, Garo Bashe who have finally admitted that, uh, that uh, Jubril is not Buhari. Now they know. Here yeah, we 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 shred the zoo to pieces. So they are nothing. If people can actually forget, I said to Yoruba, forget your prejudice about IPOB Namdekano and the Biafra. Forget, put it to one side. Ask yourself, is what Namdekano is saying is, is, is it true? What IPOB is saying is it correct? The agitation for Biafra is it merited? You go to Lagos, you kill people. You come to Ebuni, you kill people. You go to Anambra, you kill. You come to Delta, you kill. You are everywhere, slaughtering, burning people's houses and businesses. And you want the same people to stay in this country with you. Are you not mad? Are you not mad, I ask? Are you not mad, I ask? Coronavirus, he cannot address the people. I have addressed their friends all over the world. Let him come out and address people. Address them and take questions from journalists. They cannot do it. Because the person you're calling Buhari is not Buhari. He's a Sudanese. When will you people learn? When will you people ever learn to reason? When will you learn to reason? When will you learn to reason? We continue to do our work which is to expose the damnable zoological republic. And who brought us into the mess that we're in today? People must be very patient with us this very evening. Very, very patient, please. We, we, I beg of you. Be very, very patient because we are coming. I, I said it's, it's quite a lot this evening to cover. Maybe I need to do another broadcast within the middle of the week because um, things are happening. Things are happening. Things are happening. Listen very carefully. This speech was made in 1949 by Nnamdi Azikiwe he called it an address to the Igbo people that was where our problem started from our problem started from then instead of Nam, does it mean that Nnamdi Azikiwe a very learned man very intelligent does it mean he didn't actually read history to understand the interconnectedness both cultural linguistic and social between all the peoples of the East. Does he mean he didn't know that? He was dealing with people that referred, at no time did the Sadwana of Sokoto Sahamadu Bello ever say Fulani. At no people must listen very carefully to what I'm saying now. At no time did Tafua Balewa ever say, we are fighting for Hausa people, Hausas, or Fulanis, no. Or Kanuris, or Nupes, no. We said no. They understood that Islam held them together. They always said the north. Now, my question is, why is it that Namde Azikiwe kept saying, I, I, can't, I can't understand it. Forgetting the need to carry everybody along with you. The same way that Ahmad Bello Fulani carried the whole of the north with him. You need to carry the whole of the east with you. He went and moved there, Yorita. And then... Uh, the Fulani quite simply said to the Efi and the Bibio people, can you see they removed their Yota? Because Yibos are domineering. And they bought it hook, line, and sinker. They said, 
tell you stories about the war. Igbo soldiers, Biafran soldiers came. There was no Biafran soldier. If not for IPOB, imagine what they could have fabricated now against us. Just because we were, first of all, we had to go for media to counter all their nonsense. They went at and because there was no radio. Ojuku had no radio. He was only in a beetle car moving from village to village. No, Britain was sponsoring the propaganda of Nigeria against Biafra. Oh, there are Biafran soldiers uh, in uh, in uh, Oran. They have killed uh, 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 Nigerians from Cross River State. No, oh, we we hate Igbo. We hate we hate Biafra. Oh. To the extent that somebody who answers Chibi Kamichi, just some week. Eh? Somebody who answers if I'm your call is saying they are not Igbo. I can't understand the mentality is driving is driving me insane. I'm mad, honestly. That is the power of division using the media. That is why everybody must be on social media. You must be on Twitter. You must be on Facebook. You must be on Instagram. You must check me. They are evil. You must check me them. When we started, they said, oh, Anna Brahman cannot allow you allow Imo man to, to emerge. Until I told them the history of who we are. Everybody's from Anambra. <laughs> they called it uh, 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 from, from Biafra, we went to East, uh, uh, East Central uh, State after the war. They gave it to Abiyasika. The first major sabo. We, no, should I say second one after Ifajo? After that, then we went for from there to Imo and Anambra. <laughs> From Imo and Anambra, we now have uh, Abia and Ebony and uh, Delta. And it was uh, this man that divided us, or what's it called? Uh, Gowon, that gave Cross River and River State. They asked him, Why? Gowon is alive. Let any credible journalist go and ask him, Why did you create Cross River and River State? He will tell it is to divide the Igbo people, to divide you. And you bought it. Like the fools that we are, we bought it. Your own brother in Ibure, Asrin Chinda, the same blood, the same flesh, the same blood, the same name, the same language. You say he's from, from he's from, from Akra Akra, from Akra Shineke, no, never. But I have forgiven, I've forgiven everybody because we are one family. This family is one. Indivisible, the whole it doesn't matter what the media writes. Hey, now they can't speak to Ndibu, you speak the Southeast doing the best they can. Do these are these are Yoruba journalists and Debo journalists doing the work of Flanny for them for free, dividing us. But Flanny come as one north, they come to say, You're Southeast, you're South South, you're Southwest East, you're East West South, but they, they come to you as one north, one monolith. You cannot reason you went to you went to school of journalism. You're writing rubbish. I was addressing their friends. This is what Zig said in 1949. Please, with the time now standing at precisely 32 minutes, 30, no, it's actually 25 to 9, if I'm not mistaken. In Biafra land, and the same number of minutes to the top of the hour, wherever you are around the world. We are live and we are direct. This was given, an address given 11 years before Nigeria's independence. It is online, actually. People should look for it. It is titled 1949 Enam Address to Igbo People. Please look for it and post it everywhere. I want you to read it very carefully to tell you that we are always right. Always. Always right. I did not even have the benefit of this very brilliant piece before we started IPOB agitation for Biafra. But if they tell you what Zeke said here, you won't believe it. But we are going to tell you all the same. What Nam Zikiwe said. His name is Dr. Zikiwe. I don't want to put a Nam there because any people call the Nam they're always very sensible and reasonable. They don't sell out, they're not traitors. Listen to what Zeke said. He said this thing at the Igbo State Assembly. Igbo State had a very powerful movement in those days. Very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. Igbo Union. Very powerful, I'm telling you. They built National High School, Lava. Very powerful people in those days. Let me read his speech so you understand it very well. From Unnam de Azikiwe, you will not believe this. From Azikiwe. Listen. Having girls of a new day for the Igbo nation. The only thing I disagree with him here is this Igbo nation thing. Should have said the East. Should have said Biafra. 
he was a student of history, he should have known. But let's leave that to the side and continue. He said, having guards of a new day for the Igbo nation, having selected me to preside over the deliberations of this assembly of the Igbo nation, I, a, I am conscious of the fact that you have not done so because of any extraordinary attributes in me. I realize that I'm not the oldest amongst you, nor the wisest, nor the wealthiest, nor the most experienced, nor the most learned. I am therefore grateful to you for elevating me to this high pedestal. This is Aziki. I'm reading him verbatim what he said in 1949. Listen carefully, please. The Igbo people have reached a crossroad, and it is for us to decide which is the right course to follow. We are confronted with roots leading us to diverse goals, but as I say it, there is only one road that I can safely recommend for us to tread, and it is the road of self-determination for the Igbo within the framework of a dread commonwealth of Nigeria and the Cameroons, leading to the United States of Africa. All that roads, in my opinion, are calculated to lead us astray from the path of national socialization. Ziki was said that the only path he sees for our people is self-determination in his speech in 1949. And funny enough, do you know what I find very astonishing about this very speech? Is that it is the same thing that IPOB is proposing. I am for one Africa. I am for one West Africa. But people must come together. Having willingly given their consent, a white man cannot do that for them. Now you understand where I'm from. So it's, it bears a very uncanny resemblance, I should say, to the position of IPOB, which is quite bizarre. So what IPOB is doing today was what Nam De Aziki will come fast in 1949. Now, I, when we started this movement, I said that the problem of a black man is discipline and application. But along the line, he fell off. I want to know where Nam Dazikiwe fell off. I must read this speech, all of it, so that you will hear that Nam Dazikiwe in 1949 was talking about self determination that that, have, that his business and family um, um, uh, was killed in Ablado was saying the same thing. The same thing that Onye Kongwenu said a few uh, weeks back. The same thing. Self determination. Even Nam De Azikiwe that had it within his powers to insist on this. What happened? Oh, it was that time he married. A, uh, a, I think he married a Awasa woman. They gave him Fulani woman. He married and named his child Mohammed. That's where they got him. I must read this for you. I must. The evil people have reached a crossroad, and it is for us to decide which is the right course to follow. We are confronted with routes leading to diverse goals. But as I see it, there is only one road that I can safely recommend for us to tread, and that is the road to self-determination for the Igbo within the framework of a federated commonwealth of Nigeria and onwards and Cameroon leading to the United States of Africa. In other words, in my opinion, any other means, any other thing you suggest for the Igbo race will lead them astray. It will not allow them to fulfill their destiny. What Zeke called national self-realization. Can you? I can't believe I'm reading this, honestly speaking. Of course, I've read it before, but to the whole world. Listen carefully to what Zeke said. It would appear that God has specially created the Igbo people to suffer persecution in 1949. The same thing we are preaching today. And be victimized because of their resolute will to live. We are hated because of God's love for us. This was what Aziki West said in 1949. God in heaven knows. I've never read this before. I mean, of course, I didn't read this. I've read it before I came on air, but not before we started our agitation for Biafra. Exactly what we've been preaching, exactly what IPOB stands for, was what Zeke was preaching in 1949. But why did he abandon it? I have no clue. Listen to what he said. Since suffering is the label of our tribe, in 1949, Zeke is saying that the label of these very people, this IPOB, this Biafran people, is to suffer. That is why in their so called Niger, everybody is suffering. Everybody, nobody is having fun. Everybody is in pain. Everybody is suffering. Everybody is complaining. Everybody is crying. Everybody is lamenting. 
Who are the people lamenting today? Is it not the same people of Biafra, the same South South and so called uh, so called Southeast and so called South South? How one of the ones of Zeke said the same thing in 1949. But people never learned anything. They never learned anything at all, at all, at all. That is why we must remain very, very resolute. That is why we must remain very, very determined. It would appear that God has made us to suffer because we are loved, because we are appreciated. Isaac said, is it not fortunate that the Igbo are among the few remnants? He used the word indigenous. Zeke used the word indigenous. Um, she naked no nearby. Is it? Oh, I can't. I can't believe this. Honestly, is it not fortunate that the Igbos are among the few remnants of indigenous African nations who are still not spoilated by the artificial niceties of Western materialism? Because we are a people that are disciplined in those days. Forget the nonsense that you're seeing now. This is not who we are. The people that you see within Nigeria is not who we are. The Biafrans you see, the way that the Igbos, the Afis, the Bibi, the way we behave in Nigeria is not who we are. And they know it. We are not easily corrupted. We are not. As a people, he said we are indigenous. Fulani is not indigenous to Africa. Of course not. They are not. They are mongrel race. They are a mixture between the, the Tuaregs and the Arabs. They are not the, the mongrel race. They are not indigenous to Africa. It is the truth. You may not like me because of it, but it is the truth. And when they came in, they managed to conquer a house, a house, I conquered the other the rest for them. They conquered part of Europe. And with that conquest of Kwara State of the Lord, they held Europe to, to some ransom till today. I read a comment by a Yoruba uh, um, commentator who said that uh, Lauren should go with the North and leave the rest alone. This is it. Namde Azikiwa mentioned indigenous African nation, everything that we are as a people. Listen to what he said. Is it not historically significant that throughout the glorious history of Africa, the Igbo is one of the select few to have escaped the humiliation of a conqueror's sword or to be a victim of a Carthaginian treaty? The same thing that I used to preach before. Nobody conquered us. This is one thing that the world must understand. Before the British came and Arotuku fell in 1904, Nobody ever in the history of our people, spanning over 5,000 years, nobody ever conquered us as a people. And we never conquered anybody. But they come to you and they tell that the evil man is domineering. But the evil man, despite their might and their power, never conquered anybody. But tiny Fulani with their cattle conquered everybody up until the, all the way to Lauren. Now tell me who is domineering and who is not. Tell me who dominates who and who doesn't. They conquered everybody all the way to Lauren. Igbo man never conquered anybody. Biafran people never conquered anybody. Igbo man never forced an ethnic man to speak Igbo language. Never. Instead, we had in CBD. Now, who is dominating who? The same people, they come today, they take our oil, they take our gas, they take our land. Look at dead, finished. Who caused it? Fulani. The same people that told you that the Igbo man who could have fought to save Ken Sarawiwa is your enemy. Once they managed to cut the knife, you know, cut us into two, they killed Ken Sarawiwa because they know there'll be no repercussion. Do you see how they operate? I, is anybody, are you people actually learning from what I'm teaching you? Do you actually learn from what I am teaching you? Do you want to learn anything from what you learn on Radio Biafra? Because this is too much. I can't even finish it in one night. I can't. Because what has it been saying here is unbelievable. In the history before the British came, which was why I felt that it was God's design that we should be defeated in 1904 because Arochuku became very, very corrupt. Corruption in Arochuku. The Jukun came to Arochuku. They brought in their deity called the Binokwab in Arochuku. Before that, we were worshipping the one true almighty God in heaven. They started slavery. People would go to Abaku Market in Uzako and collect slaves. They will pass through Arochuku. They will pass through Nike from Arochuku. They will they will basically stamp them and uh, sell them on at Nike in Enugu. From Nike, from there to, to Jukun, to Zamfara, and they are gone. The Arabs were the first people to start slavery. And they used the Jukun to come to Arochuku to convince our high priest then, 
in Arochibu that uh, we should start selling each other. That was what happened. And God in heaven was upset. God said because of that, the same thing he did to the children of Israel, I will scatter you, I will destroy you, because you have desecrated my temple in Arochibu. That was exactly what happened. That temple was destroyed by the British in 1904. Some of you don't know this, do you? That was why God allowed them to come. Because that's how God works. The same way that the God allowed all the foreign armies to march into Jerusalem, to destroy the temple in Jerusalem, the temple of, um, of Solomon, that uh, was rebuilt by, by, by Herod. Some of you don't know this. The same, reason, the same reason why the armies of Europe marched, or should I say the armies of, of white people marched into Arochibu after fighting them for over 30 years. They managed to succeed in defeating and Arutuku fell. When Arutuku fell, the seven sons of Arutuku went to the same Asaba you see today. They uh, to, went to Ahaba, not Asaba. The name is Ahaba. Went to Ahaba in uh, where Okawa is bringing in Fulani people to go from Ekumeku. Ekumeku was the foremost guerrilla gorilla group in the whole of Africa. Number one that the British feared so much. That's why they don't like us. If you go to if you go to Delta State and ask for the history of Ekumeku, they will tell you. Who formed the Kumeku? The seven sons of Arochuku when Arochuku fell in 1904. That is pure raw history that people do not know. We are, we are well informed before we... This very, that is why I keep saying to them, if you feel you're learned or you're educated, stand in front of me for a debate, and I'm telling you, in, two, in less than two minutes, I will destroy you in such a way that if you go back to your house, your wife will not give you food that night. With facts and figures. I will decimate you. Idiots come out um, running errands for, for fools in Lagos talking rubbish about Biafra restoration. Uh, Biafra, we, we are doing this. We, we went here. Oh, I, I, I helped him to get bail. Chaff. Chaff. Driven by fear. Chaff. Driven by envy, greed, and jealousy. This very movement is IPOB. We sit where we are today by the grace of God in heaven, not man. Mortals cannot do what we are doing. IPOB is immortal. That is why I said, before us, there was none like us. Now we are here. There can never be any like us. And when we are gone, it, it forever and ever, there will never ever be people like us again. God's love to Biafran people is IPOB. IPOB is a gift from heaven. We love Biafra. Zeke said the same thing in 1949. And we never knew. I never saw this. And I thank whoever published this. I thank you a million times over. I thank you now, tomorrow, and forever for this very piece. When next somebody talks nonsense about Zik of Africa supporting one Nigeria, just give them this very speech. But Nam the Aziki will deviated from this same speech, deviated from the contents of this same speech that he gave. And that is why uh, God said, Okay, I'm going to suffer you people. And that's why we're suffering today. The, it is too much. I'm not going to go through it all. Oh, I cannot finish reading it because it is, it is amazing. Hey, look at what Zeke said here. I shall now state the facts which should be well known to any honest student of Nigerian history. On the social plane, it will be found that outside of Government College of Mwaha, which, which is where I, I went to, of course, the very finest secondary school in the whole world when I was there. Outside Government College of Mwaha, there is no other secondary school run by the British government in Nigeria, in Iboland. They did not want to come because they said these people are too intelligent. If we leave our pencil before we come back, that pencil will turn into, into, into a biro, turn into a pen. They don't understand because we are blessed. After looking at us and seeing and stealing all our artifacts from our people, they said that you have no history. We asked them, but where do we come from? They said, you people, you have no history. And we bought it, hook, line, and sinker. They did not want to participate. It was only in Government College Omaha that they existed. There was not one secondary school run for girls by the British government in, in Igbo land. In the north and everywhere, there were schools scattered everywhere. And of course, the only thing I, I, Zeke said here to his credit is that outside of Port Harcourt, fire protection is not provided in any other Igbo town. Because then, even the white man saw Igbo Cha, which they named Port Harcourt, as an Igbo town. The white man saw it as an Igbo town. That's what it was. That's what it is. Till tomorrow morning. That's what it was till tomorrow morning. 
But they come and say, oh, no, we are from Accra, Accra, from Benin. <laughs> People are so useless. So, so, so useless. Oh, we are Nyoma. Oh, we are not Igbo. We are, we are Nyoma people. What is the meaning of Anyoma? Anyoma is which language? They can't tell you. Oh, it's Igbo, but we speak Igbo, but we are from Benin. <laughs> okay. So, Benin that speak Benin language, they are from, uh, they are from Zamfara. Oh, Yoruba that speak Yoruba language. They are from, uh, they are from Kanembrono uh, 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 Empire. This is how foolish some people are. This is how foolish some are. This is the lineage of Okowa and some of your so-called governors. Some of the idiots that call themselves South-South people, Niger Delta, people without shame. You have no name. You have no history. You have considered what the white man did to you by saying you have no history, you have no name. And the north they used all their names to name all their to name all their states has it not occurred to you before so okay let me educate you they have sokoto state sokoto you used to be called gobe is a house town uh, and took it over and named it sokoto you have sokoto state you have katsina it's a traditional awasa town from time katsina katsina state kanu kanu state bauchi bauchi state nasarawa nasarawa state kebi kebi state Zamfara, Zamfara is very old. Zamfara State, Kanem Brono Empire of the of the El Kanemis of this world, Kanem Brono Empire, Brono State, Adamawa Empire, Adamawa State, and then you come to Biafra land, you have a, a cross river state, you have um, 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 rivers, you have delta. What does it mean? What does it mean for the people there? Uh, I'm from Delta, you know. But Delta is where a sea runs into the into the uh, larger body of water, depositing sand and all the rest of it. Do you know why you have Delta? It's because, you know, the ocean cannot take all the sand coming from the river. It's, it rejects it. Now, let me tell you one thing about nature that you don't know. Nature, you see a, an ocean. An ocean allow a river to put any nonsense inside it. It will say no. It will push it back. That's how you have the alluvial plains. That's that, that how Delta came about. That sand from the river, the sea won't allow it to enter the sea. The sea will push it back. That's how you have the flooded plains that you have. And somebody said that's where they come from. Uh, so you are now related to somebody from the Delta of um, River Nile because River Nile has a Delta. Mississippi has a Delta. Are you related to people from Mississippi Delta in America or from Nile Delta in Egypt? Are you people from the same Delta? Uh, country or affinity. Maybe one day Flanny will write an, in the Daily Trust and write and say, oh, uh, 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 Niger Delta people uh, are related to people from River Nile Delta or maybe Zambezi Delta. And you see them jumping up and down like lunatics. Here I tell you the truth. You may not like it. It may not sound very pleasant. It may sound slightly um, um, brash, but it is the truth. And that is why we preach it. It is the truth. On economic plane, I cannot sufficiently impress you because you are familiar with the victimization, which is our faith. Nam de Aziki, when 1949 said that the entrepreneurial skills of an Igbo man led to, this, to victimization, the same thing you're seeing in, in Abulado today, the bombing and everything, killing of our people, seizing our land, our businesses, our houses, it has been happening from time with the support of the British. Don't you understand? When you leave your homes in 1949, they left, they went to build their houses. The same discrimination because you're loved. The same thing happened to the Jews. They scattered all over the world successfully. Build successful businesses. We are pioneers in science, in literature, in art. What happened to them? Hatred. The same thing you're experiencing. Until Biafra comes, nobody will regard you as a human being. This goes for everybody. South, South, Southeast, and some parts of Middle Belt. It's the truth. That is the fact of life. If you keep dancing around, if they tell you in this world that you get to the point whereby people are begging the president to come and speak to the people, will you believe it? If they tell you that Nigeria will come to the point where they are begging for $22 billion to save themselves, will you believe it? That is the height of mismanagement. And who has been in power all these years? Zeno Fulani, with a, a sprinkling of a passenger and six years of Jonathan. It's Fulani, the same north. They messed everything up. 
And uh, when you thought your life couldn't get, or your lives couldn't get any worse, they gave you Boko Haram. And as you are coming with Boko Haram, they gave you ISIS in West Africa. You want to bring, they gave you Al Qaeda in the Maghreb. As you are about to come, they gave you Flanny Headsman, Mieti Yala. And as you are coupled with Mieti Yala being in government, Ansaru came in as well. Five terror groups from only one tribe. Five terrorist groups. And you're telling me you people are normal for saying you want to be a Nigerian. You want to be part of Nigeria. Are you not sick in the brain? What Zeke said here is plentiful. It has been published on my page, I presume, by now. And I want everybody to go there and read it. It is quite amazing. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely incredible. Every day they destroy our businesses. Every blessed day our businesses are being destroyed. When you ask them, what is happening? How do we solve this very problem? They say it's one night. Let's make it better. You are moving forward in a country where terrorists are killing you. We are the same people. That, and that is what the terrorists want. Abba Kiyari, um, Mama Ndawra, uh, Buratai, the Sultan. That is what they want to be saying. The more you say you want to be in Nigeria, the more they kill you, the more they take your businesses, the more foolish you become, the more you bury your children, the more you cry and nobody will listen, the more the Yoruba media will ignore you, and the more your life becomes even more miserable. And tomorrow you start all over again. They keep destroying our businesses. As it, in 1949, as it was said it, in Abba, he said it at that Abba of all places. Wonderful people. Abba. There is something magical about that very place. You know, Ojuku said they shouldn't be buried unless he goes to Abba, and he went to Abba as well. They carry Abba, which is quite great. There's something about Abba that is magical, very magical. As if it is the heart, the, the, the very heartbeat of Biafra itself is Abba in Ungwa. The very heartbeat itself. And funny enough, the name Abba was given to Ungwa, to that, to that very place in Ungwa land by people from Ekotekwene. Isn't it very strange? Abba that you see was named by people from Okwaiobo to show that we are one people. Forget all the stupid division. I'm, I'm Igbo. I'm this. I'm rubbish. If we are different, how come I'm dancing here in my village? How come I have a conco in my village? How come I don't have a boy in my village? The Akaraka you say you come from in Bini, do they have a boy in their place? Do they have a in their place? Do they have a conco in their place? People who cannot reason very well. And you want to be, you want to challenge IPOB. No, you can't. You can't. As we are mourning those that died last week, this, you know, every two, two days they give us a gift. All the markets are being burned. Everywhere, everywhere is burning. They have given us uh, a new gift for the week, to start the week with. What is that gift they gave us? <laughs> Is that they have said they are Aboju in Festac, the market, and in Amu or Dolphin, they've set it on fire. Who are the people in, in Festac? Who are the people in Festac in Lagos? The place is burning, it is on fire. They've burnt it, they've burnt the whole place down. Abula, though, they say, is uh, after the bombing there, they have come and Using incendiary devices everywhere and uh, and uh, what is called an accelerant. They pour it everywhere, they set fire to it, and the whole place blows up. That's what is happening. And you want to be part of this useless place. This is where you want to belong. This is the country you want to be a part of. You must learn the hard way as the Jews did until Hitler started to slaughter them one after the other in a line, one after the other. They woke up and said, Oh my goodness, so that was a land that God gave to us. It's called Israel. Let's go back there. That is why today they have prestige and they have respect. Until you go back to Biafra land, Fulani headsmen will keep on killing you. They will keep bombing you. They will keep taking over your businesses. They will keep making your life. And they will keep insulting you. That is what you don't know. And I'm the kind of mama speaker. Who are you to control me? The same people. Okowa, Okowa, in, in Delta State, bringing Miet Yala, Fulani headsmen, to kill his own people. Should consider this. Have you all forgotten that the Sultan of Sokoto, January 14, 2018, according to a report by a zoo newspaper, said that they are patrons of Miet Yala, the same Sanusi that some of you are singing and dancing over. Thankfully, after last 
that that all that rubbish has disappeared. So see, and the Sultan said, We are Mieti Allah patrons proudly. But all the governors are busy clamping down on IPOB that did nothing wrong to them. All the governors, that's what they're doing. But in the north, they are traditionally realized that governors, everybody's coming and saying, We no more Boko Haram now, Mieti Allah, the real killers. They, they support them openly. And you're telling me there isn't something wrong with us in the brain. Okay, what should learn from these people and all those governors that are that make it a habit of persecuting IPOB, helping the Flani terrorists to gain a foothold in our land. Remember why they went to Aburi? We always right. I want any day that Yoruba will stop, any day some people, not the Ayade Banjos and the Fanikayo days of this world and the Yinka Uduma kings of this world. None of those are, they are, they, those are progressives. They are very intelligent people. They understand between the lines. They are not, that's not what is happening. The same with the Rikan as well. I believe that Biafrans and, and, and the Yorubas and the West, I believe that the East and the West should cooperate. I believe in that in order to be able to defeat this tide of terrorism coming from the North. I believe in that completely. And that is why I said we'll give men to, to Amotekun should that become very necessary. But isn't it very funny that the same thing, you know, as I was reading out earlier, the same things that um, that Zeke saw in in 1949 and talked about it very eloquently, is what Ujuku saw at Aburi in 69, 68, 69, and explained to go on that this is the way forward. Is it? Do you know the funniest thing? The same thing Ujuku was saying at Aburi was what Zeke said in 1949. And it's what IPOB is saying in 2020. Isn't it very funny? The same thing. The same thing. That's exactly what we are saying. The same thing. Isn't it very bizarre? And the thing about Nigeria, the zoo, is that they always realize it after 50 years. They realize oh, no. After 50 years. The same thing. The same thing. Now, our next minister is calling for power devolution and constitutional review. Constitutional review. His name is Bala Kaoje. He is not a Biafran. Now, what the assignment I am giving to Nigerians, those that practice journalism in Nigeria, although the name Nigeria is, a, is very funny because it wasn't given to you by an African, but since you decided to, or since you have decided to be a guinea pig, in one giant British lab called Nigeria. That's entirely your business. All these zoo journalists, I have a question for you or something I'd like you to do. Why don't all of you go to Gowan and ask Gowan, why did you renege on Aburi agreement to reach the Jew? Is that, is that a, a difficult question to ask? He, this, this is, this, it, it, when I was planning to come on air today, it actually reminded me of the, when I say that the man is stupid, I have my some of you don't like it, but it's the truth. Go on is lying on prayers to save Nigeria. But when he had an opportunity to do something tangible to save Nigeria, he didn't do it. But he is now relying on spirit to do it for him. I don't know if you're following what I'm saying. When it was time to practicalize, practicalize what can save Nigeria, he didn't do it. He is relying on prayers. Exactly the way that typical monkeys behave. In a zoo, like as in Nigeria. You don't do that thing that God said you should do. After messing up and uselessing yourself, you come back and start praying to God. Oh, God is now saying to go on, what happened that Aburi that I sent you to? That is why they're killing them in the, in the middle belt. This one is saying the same thing. Talking about what Ojibu discussed, but these were people who were against Ojibu. Today, now, they are saying exactly what Ojibu prescribed for Nigeria. Everybody should be on their own. Pay taxes to the central government if need be. And then from there, we start growing as a region until all Africa becomes one, as it was before the white man came. People can travel easily across Africa without the passport. The same thing today that they are now acknowledging. The same thing today that they are now beginning to acknowledge. They now understand it. What are your governors doing? They are fighting each other. This one said this, sir. That one said that, sir. This one said this, sir. Oh, he has said something. Oh, Golancha, he has said something. 
with rubbish. Practicalize what you're saying. They will not do it. In any other sensible place, in any other part of the world, they will come out and say, since it's only IPOB that is defending us, let us support IPOB. Come out and anything can happen. All of them together, all the 10, or should I say 11 governors of the East, can come out and say, enough is enough, and the whole North can go to hell. But they want to be, I want to be vice president. They keep betraying one another. These are the people you got. You are dying today in Lagos. They are burning your businesses because the people you open your mouth to call leaders are people who are cursed by God. Cursed by God. Keep supporting evil. And the evil will keep on consuming you. That is exactly what is happening. The time now is uh, not about eight minutes. Eight minutes past eight in Biafra land. And the same number of minutes past of that. That's how you know we are live and we are direct. Bringing you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. They are calling for devolution now. The same devolution, the same Aburi Accord go on rejected. The same thing that Yoruba has forced on. on. Awolowo could not ask. As intelligent as Awolowo was, Awolowo could not ask. Go on. Why did you not accept Aburi? Because Britain told go on. If you allow Aburi, any type of limited autonomy you give to the East, they will do better than every other person. That was how they convinced Awolowo. That's all. No other reason. There is no other reason. The same way they're killing us now was how they were slaughtering us then and Ojuku said enough is enough. No. That is why people say, oh, what happened to you? I said, we are waiting. We want the whole world to be convinced and also our people to understand their own responsibility and for the world to know that it is this killing of Biafran people that will lead us to declare Biafra when the time comes. They must understand it. Right now they haven't. But we must ask them to understand it. You must make them to understand it because uh, it is unbelievable. He is a, a mass murderer leading prayer session in Nigeria. Whereas he, the, the, the solution was in front of him. Devolution, the, the same thing that Afeni Fede is calling for today. The same thing that the very respected and very erudite by Ayo Adebanjo is calling for today. The same thing that every sensible person is calling for. The same thing that Middlebelt is calling for was what Ujuku called for at Aburi. It was agreed. Britain said to go on, don't agree. Go on, throw it away. Today, he's, resor he's resorting to prayers. Instead of going back to that thing that he should have done to make things, he's going and praying. That is how disingenuous some people are. That is how evil people are. That is why I, I hate Go on with a passion. Not that I, not just because I, he killed a lot of Biafran. I hate it. He, he is a hypocrite. You know that life is based on things being practicalized. You are there. You were at Aburi. Instead of you to say, oh, I made a mistake, let us go back to Aburi and renegotiate and understand the of you said, no, let's pray. Do you see how evil some people can be? He knows that the solution is Aburi. He knows it very well. Yoruba media, they know the solution is Aburi. They know that very, very well. But instead of them to go towards Aburi, they're saying, no, let's pray. Let us pray. That's the difference between a black man and a white man. A white man will go and find a solution to the problem. Prayer doesn't do anything unless you back it up with some action. You must know that by now. If at all, you know it. That is why you have been given an imposter in the zoo. How many, how many, how much evidence do you need from us? That somebody who suffered a brain tumor cannot make a, re a remarkable recovery and start looking 40 years younger. It is impossible. How do you, how, in which language, do you want me to speak, say it in, 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 in Fufude or in Hausa, so you understand it? Look at how the whole about, including their, their, their Lamajiri on the street, how they are protecting a man from Sudan because they need to hold on to power. It's the only thing they have. They have nothing to create it. They are not, they are not they know the only thing they have is the presidency that is the only thing they cling on to for their, their lives instead of Yoruba media to come out and say 
this is wrong. What you're doing is wrong. Hey, keep quiet. I say, oh, I don't want an Igbo man to be better than me tomorrow. Because if Biafra becomes, they know that very well. Once Biafra becomes, if they like, they can try us now. Let us do an experiment. Let us go to the UN and sign an agreement. Allow Biafra to go for two years. And you will see what will happen. They don't want it because we will put everybody else to shame. They know it. It is the truth. They know that once Biafra stands on, it, on its own, Africa lied to come into Africa. That is why they, say, they keep saying no all the time to Biafra. You think they say no to Biafra because they, 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 they hate the fix, they hate the BBO. They hate, no, 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 it's not that. It's not that. They don't want Africa to be developed. They do not want Africa to be developed. That is the reason why they are doing what they are doing. They don't want it to be developed. Instead of doing what is right, you are praying. The solution is there. Your child is dying. Let's say a child contracts this very dangerous uh, um, 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 virus. Instead of you to give this child chloroquine, 800 milligram in the morning, 800 milligram in the evening, the first day, and then 200 in the morning for five days, you stay. You have seen the chloroquine there, or the antibiotics, or the retroviral drug, and this child is dying of corona, and you're there praying. How is that possible? And you are busy praying when you should be simply get up, pick up the drug and give the child to take to recover. You are praying. That's exactly what Gowan is doing. Gowan knows the solution is in Aburi. They know it. Every European knows the solution is in Aburi, but they will never say it because of their shame so that Ojuku will not be posthumously vindicated. That's all. That is how, that is how petty and envious they are. That is how petty, that is how childish their minds work. That is how hopeless they are. Instead of, Ojuku is dead, is in the grave. Instead of him, instead of you to give him the honor that he was right, that the basis of the negotiations in Aburi was the only way that the zoo could be saved. For everybody, for every ethnic nationality, for everybody, you rejected it. Instead of applying the solution, we are applying prayer. Let us pray. Let us pray. What are the solution is there? Mad people everywhere. Mad zoo everywhere. We continue. And when you want to kick you out, and punch. Because I said to the media, go to Abuja and ask him questions. Let him answer. How can you have a present? Everything is in ordinary good morning, ladies and gentlemen. He needs to read it from a piece of paper. And you're telling me that I should have respect for Nigerians. I should respect Nigerians. You people are insane. You are mad. Your brains are not correct. All of you put together. So-called useless, hopeless Nigerians. Monkeys are better than all of you. Baboons are better. The reason better than all of you put together. You people are hopeless. How can you have a president that a oh, common good morning is written down? Everything. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is, he will say that he's rubbish and he, he disappears for another six months. You don't see him. If you are Buhari, stand and take questions from journalists. Only take questions. Take it live. And you see their fraud unravel before their eyes. Mad people everywhere. We will expose them. Their nightmare is IPOB and they know it. That is their nightmare. The same day that I, I, I said, I told the world that that man there, they said he came back, he's not, he's not Bukhari, he's Jibril. They planned, they had to come and kill me. They, they, fought, they, they called it Operation Python Dance. Let's go and kill him. And some idiots, they promised uh, vice presidency connived with them. Now one of them is in trouble. A primat is in very big trouble. Some idiots will say, oh, but he, he signed your, your bail bond for you because some of you are very foolish. You know nothing. The law of Nigeria says no senator should be involved in the bailing of anybody. People went and forcibly inserted themselves in my bail condition so they can control me. They don't among, I, I will control them instead. Do I look like somebody can control mad people everywhere? This Eugene Dara. We must speak the truth. You will not like it, but I will tell you the truth. Morning, noon, and night, I will tell you the truth. I will tell you the truth. Buhari has paralyzed the entire nation, according to the... These are his supporters before. These are the people calling me names. 
Tele Mamudu, this idiot who has been making money from selling garbage, entertaining you idiots, smiling, should I say suffering and smiling um, generation. Coronavirus Buhari has paralyzed the entire nation and shut out all its citizens like orphans, Tele Mamudu. He knows that this is not Buhari. They all know. They are scared. They are cowards to the bone. To the bone marrow, they are cowards. Cowards cannot speak the truth. How can he speak? Is he Buhari? Buhari is dead in Saudi Arabia. How can he speak? How can that thing speak? Speak. What does he know he's going to talk about? Tomorrow, today he's short. Tomorrow he's tall. The next day, he, the, his makeup is, is, is okay. The next one, they cannot get his makeup right. The other, uh, another time, they brought two of them outside without even knowing that two of them are outside at the same time. And you see all these things. Your brain is telling you that these two people are not the same, but in your natural African stupidity, you cannot seem to accept it or accept the obvious. Very, very sad indeed. I know about that some of you that data is a very big concern. Please go to IPOB um, um, app and listen to us. Or you, you can continue listening via CHK scattered across Biafra land because everywhere is buzzing tonight, I can assure you. Because here we preach the whole truth and nothing but truth. Well, everything I tell you is correct. You may not like it, but it is the truth. Buhari is dead in Saudi Arabia, and Jubril is there running, ruining your lives. And you can't even talk. They are sending terrorists from all over the place to kill you. you can't speak. It's only idea that some of you people fathered by Fulani Janja will ruin the world. That's all you know. That's all you know. As they are doing this, they are selling themselves into slavery. Have you read the news at all in Vanguard newspaper? How we sold Nigerians into slavery in Libya. That's what some of you to be sold into slavery so your eyes can open. How we sold Nigerians into slavery in Libya. These are the suspects. That's what they said. Very sad, isn't it? That's all they do. They can't come out to protest. They cannot come out to join any revolution. They cannot do nothing. It's just to stay there on social media. Uh, Loretta Onoche will, will, will give them uh, uh, maybe trade that money or give them 2,000 naira to buy data. There's some that are intellectuals who are writing rubbish. Eventually, after their whole useless intellectualizing, let me, you went to, to, to a school that has no roof. A community school that has no roof in the village and you come out and say, you're an intellectual. And I call you, you know, at the end of the day, they agree with us to what we're saying. That what we're saying is absolutely correct. 100% correct. They are selling themselves. Maybe this one, they, they sell all, all the zoo animals, they, they better for, for everybody. Maybe the, the, those left will be able to reason properly. Those left ways to reason properly. Of course, there are many people who know that um, Jubril is no longer, is, is the one running the zoo, that Buhari is no longer alive. He is no longer alive. Nigeria must come to Aburi Mike Ahamba was a very close friend of the dead Buhari. He was his lawyer as well. Mike Ahamba was a very close friend of the dead Buhari, a lawyer. These are the people that believed in one Nigeria, one APC, one CPC, one North, one East, one all that, one rubbish. Today he has changed. Aburi Accord, let's return to Aburi Accord. How can you return to Aburi Accord? When the idiot that's covered Aburi Accord is busy praying. Go on, he's busy praying. Instead of him to address the core issue, he is busy praying. Are you telling me that all the Yoruba professors don't know that Aburi Accord is the answer? They know. Are you telling me that all the Yoruba editors of business don't know Aburi is the answer? They know, but they won't say it. Because anything that will give an evil man freedom, anything at all, they don't want it. Because uh, I'm with all due apology, actually, we will put everybody else to shame. That's how God made us. You can't change it. There is nothing you can do. Biafra is inevitable. It doesn't matter what you do. It will come. And you will see it before your eyes. And uh, when it happens, you know, IPAB, we are very good. I will bring out this very broadcast. Uh, somebody very intelligent will store it somewhere. And when it happens, we'll bring it out and tell you, I told you so. That's what I will say to you then. I told you. Michael Hamba is saying that we must return to Abuja Court now. Or else, we must return now. It is too late. Too little, too late. Be afraid. Everything is working exactly how Elohim wanted it to work out. Exactly. To perfection. That time that Go One rejected Abuja was when I knew that God wanted us to, to, to leave the zoo. At the point that Britain said to go on, don't agree. That was the end of Nigeria. It's only it's only marking time. It will come to an end. Yugoslavia came to an end. Soviet Union came to an end. So 
why won't it come to a end? Why, why wouldn't it? As every other corrupt empire did. Every other corrupt empire did. Things are happening. Those that call themselves South, South, Niger Delta, we are close. Ibo man is wanting to do this. Ibo man is doing that. They are today being massacred. A suspect, they said they call them suspected headsmen. These are flanny people. They are now one named River State and the white man named the capital Port Harcourt. <laughs> Something is wrong with us, you know. Maybe who knows who, who will come again and give us a name and will accept it. Bendel, Delta. Um, what are those names again? Uh, Bendel, uh, Delta, uh, Niger Delta, South South. No indigenous name. Where they concoct this rubbish from, only God knows. And they answer it with every happiness. They swallow it with every happiness. God forbid. A former governorship aspirant in River State, Shoala West, was on Wednesday killed by Fulani headsmen in Alu community, equally local government area of the state. He's a, he's a Nigerian. <laughs> Equal is part of Nigeria, not part of Biafra. Some of the idiots will say. But I'm very glad today that the whole of Equal land, the whole of Equal land is part of what we are doing. Said everywhere. There was no road anywhere. Everyone was shut down. Very good people. We are good people anyway. We all have our faults. Everybody does. But all is one family. We are one family. All of us together. Regardless of our differences. Regardless of abandoned properties. There are nothing. We will knock them down and build beautiful houses for our children. And their children's children. I assure you of that. So forget about all those um, two by two that you have. Everything will be built. Fresh, fresh from new. From new. We will build it what is very marvelous. I assure you of that. Shoala West was killed by full of people that he was serving so diligently. He's from South South. Ibo man is the problem. Did Ibo man kill him? The answer is no. Did Ibo man kill him? No. Some of you never learn. Some of you never ever learn. But we are here to teach you and one day you will learn. Shola is from Akuku Toru. The government area of the state. He was still in Alo on March 12, 2020, when Fulani bandits, Fulani terrorists, abducted and took him away to the destination. The next thing you're hearing, his corpse was found on Wednesday around 6 p.m. He's the, he's the, he died as a Nigerian, killed by his fellow Nigerians, by Fulani terrorists. Very, very sad indeed. This is Radio Biafra. We'll bring you the truth. The whole truth and. and uh, Kuka is crying. Reverend Kuka is crying. His bishop is a bishop, isn't he? Sorry, I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, they call him Lord Bishop. My Lord Bishop, I'm sorry. That's what they call him. He said, the, the, this is the vacuum that the political elite has exploited by turning the country into a jungle where the arbitrary rule of men has replaced the rule of law and mere human instincts have become substitutes for constitutionalism. I like the grammar anyway, I must say. You know, here I wouldn't want to 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 perhaps um, elevate, um, should I say, um, my spoken English to make it very difficult for people in the rural and remote areas to be able to understand what we are saying. So we try to keep it as simple as possible so that our grandmothers can follow what we are preaching here on this very platform. Because when people want to lie, they gravitate towards English language. In in your local parlance, you cannot lie that easily. The Catholic Bishop of Sokoto Diocese, Matthew Kuka, has accused Nigerian political leaders of turning the country into a jungle, into a zoo, isn't it? Everybody agrees with us eventually. Where injustice thrives. Catholic Archbishop in Sokoto, Archbishop Kuka, of course, he's outspoken. He's a man that I like very much. He speaks his mind. And um, he's a Nigerian. He was created by Lugard. And um, he's defending one Nigeria. He spoke very well about our agitation while I was in detention. After a while, he changed. But thanks to the savagery of the Fulani and their primitive brutality, <laughs> he has seen the light, as everyone will see eventually. Everybody will see that Nam De Kano has been right. Everybody will come to the realization that IPOB is always correct. He's now lamenting. But as I keep saying to all of them, too little, too late. Fulani will consume all of you. 
will be consumed. You see, Yoruba, keep supporting evil. Fulani will consume, consume, consume you. Fulani, it's not that they are strong. It's that they, they are long-term and they're very strategic. And with the help of the British. What the British wants to do is to either have, have a poly fund or have the zoo. They have Nigeria in a perpetual state of turmoil. That is how they benefit from it. Um, some people ask an alarm my wooden That's the, the philosophy of Britain. That they they, they 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 thrive when an African country is in disarray. That's what they love so much. You know. But I'm I'm hopeful and I am praying that that Boris Johnson will be a bit different, that he will not be like the rest that went before him. That will be different. I'm seriously praying uh, that the conservative um, government of Boris it's more different from those that have gone. That's my prayer every blessed day, that they will be able to see the light and allow people to be free as they're supposed to. But Archbishop Kuka is right. Nigeria is a jungle. People are now speaking out a bit more, which is very good. And I will encourage, I keep saying all the time that the box stops is Yoruba media houses. They are the problem. The channels of this world, they are the big, 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 big problem. Big problem. Because um, as I said, a black man or black woman with stomach infrastructure tendencies would always gravitate towards corruption. And corruption is not just taking money from people at checkpoints or, or trying to take kickbacks or, or, or handbacks, as, as you may call it. When a journalist is down and fails to report the truth, that is the worst form of corruption. And I'm directing this thing at Yoruba newspapers and Yoruba media houses. What they're doing in Nigeria is the reason why people are dying. It is the reason why there is so much terrorism because they have refused repeatedly to be objective in their coverage and their reportage. Very, very important we point this out to the whole world, because that is what is happening. But I do, I do commend um, a few of them, those who have now um, unshackled themselves from the very despotic tendencies of the Fulanese to try and report the truth, as Punch and AIT is trying their damn best to do. We must continue. This is Radio Biafra. We are live and we are direct. Many people are struggling because of their data. But I'm asking them to please try and hang on or run to your neighbor's house and listen to this very broadcast this evening. It is very, very important. Very, very important. Somebody wrote something that I agree with because when somebody writes something I agree with, I always say it. His name is Prince Justice. Follow yeah. Man is a, is a progressive. He, he has written that Yoruba Igbo common unity essential to collective survival of humanity, and I agree with him. Let me repeat Yoruba Igbo, what by which I mean, let them say east and south, let's just say south of the zoo called Nigeria. East and west, the unity of the east and the west, because anytime we say this Igbo uh, and Yoruba thing, what they will do, the family will cut it out. Loretta Noche will help them cut it out. And they'll start inboxing our people, um, Biafrans from the coastal region. They will say, can't you see, he's, he's making this Biafra thing an Igbo affair, forgetting that somebody has to lead. In the UK, England is at the front leading. In Germany, the Bavarian region is at the front leading. That is how it is. In the USA, you have the West Coast, the mighty California leading. That is how life is. Someone has to lead from somewhere. Someone has to lead. That is why it appears as if the, the, there is some, um, uh, what I will refer to as the preponderance of, um, of Igbo people in the affairs of the East. That is the only way I can put it. This Prince Justice following is very, very clear that the unity of the, the, the East and the West, Igbo and Yoruba, is very, very essential. Very, very essential. And I want to reiterate this this evening that those Yoruba people or those from Elorin who out of one ill-conceived consideration or the other have decided to adopt this very hostile anti-Biafra stance when it comes to the propagation of their views must also realize that the Fulanis will not spare them. 
The Fulani did not spare the Hausa people. They gobbled them up. The Fulani used the Hausas to conquer themselves. The Hausas conquered themselves for Fulani and handed themselves over willingly to the Fulanis. The same thing that the Yorubas will do inadvertently if they do not reverse their very uh, um, distressing and, and annoying ways in terms of how they view things in the zoo called Nigeria and in terms of how they also report it. We are live and we are done. This is Radio Biafra. We are hastily bringing our proceedings this evening to close, but we must be people. Because there was a young man going to visit the mother. He was abducted by the Nigerian police, and that is the lawlessness that Bishop Kuka is talking about. And beaten up by the police and shot. And we are being told that four people have been killed by Ifan Okowa and his full friends in Delta State, all because IPOB is doing the best they can to repel the Fulani um, um, attack in Delta State. This man was beaten up and please, I want the, very, the video of this man to be distributed. In Nigeria, you have the police stealing people's mobile phones in broad daylight and threatening them with guns. We also have the video as well. And I want Nigeria to understand something, both the Inspector General of Police, I want Abakiare and all those that run the zoo to understand something. All the evidence that we collect, everything you see on my page, Every senator in America has it as well. And they, they take their time, of course. Uh, I do concede that this whole corona I I issue may have slowed things down a bit, but eventually they'll get around to it. I remember what happened in Bosnia and in Kosovo, how the Serbians were all over the place, killing and pillaging, not knowing that all the atrocities and the crimes are being chronicled very meticulously for, for prosecution and disintegration of Yugoslavia. And that did come to pass. And I want to assure those who run the zoo called Nigeria, that the same fate shall befall Nigeria. It will not escape it. That I can assure you. Everything you see on my page, I can tell you that frontline politicians in the West, in Europe and in America, they have it. They must know that. They have it. Don't think that we, uh, anyway, they know. Because when they go to their meetings, they tell them what we are doing. That we are exposing them and we shall continue to do so. The video is slightly distressing. The video is distressing of what police are doing. Snatching people's mobile phones, abducting people, and beating them up. Basically killing people for no reason. The police have now turned into armed robbers. That is what is happening in the zoo. That is what is happening in Nigeria. And that is what we, IPOB, and the coming of Biafra will put to an end. And deservedly so, I must say. Deservedly so. Nigeria is so lawless that a justice, a justice of the high court, a justice, Justice Uwebu, is saying that the judiciary has collapsed in Nigeria. The Nigerian judicial system is said to be under serious threat given the area of injustices gradually becoming the norm in the country because they use, now you have a rubber stamp Senate, anything that Jubril wants, anything Abakiari wants, they give him. And you have the judiciary. They have so much harassed. I don't know who drew up this plan for the Fulani, how they managed to conquer everybody, a bunch of cattle rearers. How they managed to do this to people, I do not know. I do not. They've just intimidated everybody into silence. The judges cannot do anything. Nobody moves. It's like, it's, it's, it's a, I wouldn't call it even a police state. It's a terror state. A state of terrorism. From top to bottom. The legal system in Nigeria has effectively collapsed. Anybody who read the report of the U.S. government, the State Department about Nigeria will know that they, they, they made it very clear there that Nigeria has effectively collapsed. The judiciary no longer functions effectively. It has more or less collapsed. That is what is happening in the zoo, and that is what will keep happening until... And there are... People are in trouble. Those owning houses in Dubai, they're in very serious trouble. That's one. I'm a leader. I'm your father. Worth how much? They have worth, see, 164 billion naira. These are your leaders. Oh, leave him. He's our son. He is son of the soil. And unfortunately, April Mado was also implicated in it. That is why they want to lead you. That is why I keep saying all the time. Anybody who comes out and says, and and dying to be a coordinator in IPOB, dying to be a woman leader, dying and forcing himself to be something, 
where they can lay hands on money is because that person is fraudulent. Look at them. They are your leaders. Their children go to the finest schools in the world. They own 164 billion naira worth of Now you understand your stupidity and your foolishness, isn't it? You can see why they're against the IPOB. They know in Biafra such nonsense cannot happen because the accounting process in Biafra land will be open in the public. If the government has 10 Biafran, um, we're not going to call it pounds, of course, we we'll change it. Uh, if, we, if we have $10 equivalent of Biafran currency, the whole world will know about it. How we spent the whole world will know. The government gazette will publish every, ten, every 10 will be public. Public hearings will be held. Look at them. These are your so-called leaders. They give them money to build on Nisha, uh, 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 Enugu Express, where they pocket it. They go to Dubai and buy properties. They say we are Igbo leaders. This is the Igbo leader for you. They give them money to build the Igbo Cha, Igbo Cha, Enugu Express, road. they pocket the money. They go to Dubai, they buy houses, they come back, and they want to go eat yam in Germany. And some of you are supporting them. That's how foolish you are. That's how foolish you are. Anyway, that is their comeuppance. And they have met it. And in the midst of all this chaos and trouble, somebody said something that I quite agree with. He's a professor. Uh, I don't know if he's professor of coronavirus or professor of uh, physics or chemistry. I don't know. But he is the Delta State Chairman of the, of the Pan Niger Delta Forum, PANDEV. He's an Igbo man. He is not in Ohaneze. They formed a group called Pandev because the foreigners asked them to form Pandev and they formed Pandev. It's very sad indeed, isn't it? Professor Godini Dara, he has blamed former Governor General of Nigeria, Lord Lugard, Lord Frederick Lugard, for some of the challenges confronting the nation, as I have said always. A lot of them listen to Radio Biafra, and thankfully so. I don't blame Lugard. I blame the idiots that accepted what Lugard left behind. There was Nehru, there was um, Gandhi, uh, uh, people of Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan. They start to get, they cannot be in the country. I am Hindu, you are Muslim, go your way after the British left. And they partitioned India. But when they left, Nam Dazikwe forgot what he said in 1949 because they gave him a girl from the north. <laughs> Maybe he called her Aisha, who knows? And they confused him. So they're talking rubbish, one Nigerian. This man said he's a professor. He said, Professor Godini Dara said that Lugard will not make heaven, that he's in hell with Lucifer, with Satan. That's what this man said. And I agree with him in total. Whoever created Nigeria doesn't deserve to go to heaven because Nigeria, that is why I said, I've been telling, telling people that uh, this coronavirus, oh, <laughs> coronavirus coming into Biafra land, coming into West Africa, uh, that virus is actually taking a risk. Because I don't know if this virus has seen the way we mix medicine in the chemist. All we need to do is to go inside the chemist and tell the chemist to mix medicine for us. One mixture and the coronavirus will go missing. How we mix medicine? You know those capsules, some are pink and yellow. Some are, 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 are red and, and, uh, and orange. It's unbelievable. You see somebody telling the chemist, mix it here, that one, put it. And he doesn't know what it does. By the time we mix everything together, Coronavirus will be nowhere to be found. So what we are saying in essence is that the, the zoo called Nigeria is hell already. And um, anybody coming from there or saying he or she is a Nigerian, I, I just feel sorry for you. Do some of you actually reason things through? Before you say, is it because some of you are not saying I'm a Nigerian? Not, not because you, you know it to be true, but because you want to challenge what IPOB is doing. You want to counter what Namdekan is saying. He, uh, he cannot be right. So let me just say I'm a Nigerian. But you know you're a monkey, you're a baboon, you're an animal, because you are created by Lugard. And Lugard is, is being roasted beside Lucifer in hell at this moment, according to this very professor, Godini Dara, who allowed himself to be carved away from his people, who allowed himself to be deceived. All this pandef nonsense and rubbish, deception, to divide the Igbo nation. And he succeeded. We are pandef, rubbish. Go and join Ohanese and people should continue the rubbish you've been doing before. We shouldn't have two groups 
in the east. It should be only be one. Some of you don't reason. In the north, it's called Arewa Consultative Forum. All the way to sometimes Idoma land. In the west, you have Afenifere. It's only in the east. You have Ohaneze. You have Pandev. Shame on you people. Shame on you people. You can never reason very well. Never ever reason very well. It's called divide and rule. It was what Lugard brought. And that's why Lugard is in hell. So this very professor, for saying that Lugard is in hell, you must also understand, for carrying on from where Lugard left off, you'll also go to hell, unless you change your ways. And unless you amend the way that you reason. Very, very important indeed. And that brings us to the end of tonight's proceedings. But I must say very hastily, or very quickly, please listen very carefully to the announcements. Very, very carefully, please. To what I have to say regarding the internal workings of IPOB, the whole world, because here nothing is hidden. Nothing is hidden. We must start this very evening. I am asking the DOS to please also look at the issues. I, want, I understand there are a few issues um, all over the place, especially in Angola and the few other places. I want the issue in Angola to be resolved as quickly as possible. And People must listen very carefully. We don't sell forms in IPOB. And I have said it before, allow me to repeat. Anybody parading himself as the leader of BSS will be dealt with from this minute onwards. There is no position like that within IPOB. I lead BSS. I lead the volunteer command myself. Nobody else does. I want people to understand that. We don't sell any forms. We don't have any ID. We don't sell any forms in IPOB. Anybody giving you a form is collecting your data to DSS so they can come and arrest you. And having said that, I want to report on those who are being detained and want it to be published very also on my page uh, Maka, I want you to publish this information as quickly as possible these are the people who have been detained by Ifani Okowa and his Fulani friends Ifani uh, uh, Okowa and his Fulani friends are detaining these Biafran people in detention centers in and around Delta State we have forwarded their names to those that matter and we are placing the world on notice that should anything happen to any of these people that the commissioner of police in that very state says director in that state and the family of course family will bear the brunt i don't care what you give to diplomats abroad i'm just telling you as a matter of fact allow me to read out their names john chukuma is our state coordinator Sunday Ashaka was also kidnapped. These are the names of kidnapped Biafrans in Delta because I made the announcement that we are not going to allow the Fulanese continue to rape our mothers and to kill our people. Listen very carefully. They were arrested on 16th of March 2020. That is Chidi Wanmiri, Eyi Friday, Wodo Ike Chupu, John Ojike Madabuchi. Ekene Otako, Wama Machidi, they shot him, he has a bullet wound, and John Ibe was killed. Ifan Yokowa in Delta State killed John Ibe. So that when we say we will go after anybody who kills a Biafran, they will stand this. They killed John Ibe. Stand carefully, please. So Alamajiri and all those Fulani and Loretta Onochie. Those of you in Asorok listening to this program to cut out bits of it and send to diplomats all over the world to deny me entry and stop me from propagating the news or the gospel of IPOB, IPOB's restoration of Biafra. I want you to understand this that John Ebe has been killed in Delta. Any Friday and or John AGK we are shot and taken away with their motorcycle, they're on a motorbike, they were shot and taken away. There are those who have been in custody now for nearly three months. Wednesday, Uchenna, Oko Abo, Chukwudi, Obiada, Michael, and Aliebu Obina. I am holding Ifan Yokowa responsible. I want people to know. So that when you start saying, oh, it is this, uh, we are in Delta. 
you are Igbo, so you understand it very well in your stupidity. You forgot that the man that brought that made the that 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 made the fullness justify the massacre of every Igbo person in the north is from Okpanam. His name is Zob. You forgot that 300,000 Easterners were massacred in the north because of Nzobo, who is from the same delta. Before you start talking rubbish, you must understand that very well. If I recall, allow me to repeat. And at the old Alamajiris in, in, in Delta State, ensuring that the Delta State is taken over by a full and Janja wheat. John Tukuma is our state coordinator, is in detention. Sunday, Ashaka Piaro is in detention. Collins Wamba Chukud is in detention. Ike Chuku Nwaudo is in detention. Ogodo Monde is in detention. Wamiri Chidi is in detention. Any Friday in detention. Nwodo Ike Chuku in detention. John Oji Kemadabuchi in detention. Ekene Otako in detention. Wamama Chidi, he was shot. He has a bullet wound. They killed John Ibe. Ifan Yokowa and the foreign terrorists in Delta killed John Ibe. Any Friday and the AGK we are shot and taken away with their motorcycle. Once the Uchenna has been in detention for over three months, no court because the zoo is lawless. We are innocent, we've done nothing wrong. Chukudi Obiada Michael is in detention. Oka Oke Oko Abo is in detention. Ali Obina is in detention. We are watching. Amnesty International is aware of what is going on. The State Department in the U.S. is aware of what is happening. We must pursue their release. Namde Ubi is also in Omaha in detention. There are people detained all over the place. This is sometimes what we have to go through in a freedom fighting. But in the end, victory will be ours. We are going to. I ask everybody who has been detained to remain resolute. We are going to make sure that everybody is released. I have the picture of the state commissioner. His name is Hafiz Muhammad Inua. Hafiz Muhammad Inua, a terrorist. He will not arrest his fellow terrorists in Fulani headsmen, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda in the Maghreb, ISIS in West Africa or Ansuri. But he is in Delta State killing Biafrans for no reason. So I am telling Yoruba media to understand this very well before they start writing their jargon to understand this very well. That this man called Hafiz Muhammad Inua is in Delta State killing Biafran people. He is in Delta State facilitating the takeover of Delta by a Fulani terrorist. That is what he's doing in Delta State. And the world must be aware of what he is doing. Not tomorrow. They will say they don't know. I want his picture everywhere. I want his picture everywhere. I want the world to understand what these evil people are doing. Please, and I also want the form to be circulated. The form that they are circulating all over the place saying that it is from BSS. It is not from BSS. There is nothing like BSS. BSS is silent. You don't see them. Allow me to repeat. BSS is silent. You don't see them. When we launch our security outfit, the whole world will see for themselves how we have structured our security in Biafra land. It is very, very important that whoever is spreading himself as BSS a leader should stop doing that with immediate effect. Very, very important. And also, I am compelled to talk about the Elders Council. There are about three versions of our Elders Council. I am of them as an order. All the Elders Council, be show, uh, uh, big and all of, all of them stand this immediate effect tonight i am convening a meeting of all of them and there everything will be resolved and sorted out so we can move forward where things are going with our elders i do not like it we must i am dissolving all the elders council tonight all three of them stand dissolved from tonight I have instructed our national coordinator to go how to convene all of them together so I can address them and have this matter resolved as quickly as possible. As quickly as possible. I have also lifted the suspension of Umbise family that was suspended from the worldwide family of IPOB. And I have also instructed the Biafra national coordinator to reinstate those that were principal officers prior to their suspension. 
and also I must say this evening that no coordinator of any sort should be responsible for our relay stations and neither should they tamper with our finance officers. They are not supposed to. It is an order from me. No coordinator should have anything to do with our relay stations and no coordinator should have anything to do with the funding. And I'm sure a memo has gone out to that effect. Authentic receipts can only be issued by the audit team. No other person can. Only receipts issued by the audit team is regarded as valid. Aquaibom State Coordinator, I must say, is the principal officer in Aquaibom State. I repeat, Aquaibom State Coordinator that I appointed is the principal officer in Aquaibom State and is not answerable to any other person except the Biafra Land Coordinator. There are those that want to play Godfather in Aquaibom, and I won't have that rubbish in IPOB. It doesn't happen here. We are not the zoo. Aquaibom State Coordinator is the first servant of IPOB in Aquaibom and is answerable to Biafra Land National Coordinator. If I find anybody intervening, interrupting, interfering with his work, that person will be expelled from IPOB regardless of who you think you are. You will be expelled. I will announce your expulsion on air and you'll be off. You'll go out and you'll write whatever rubbish for two, three weeks and you'll disappear into oblivion as the rest that went before you. One, please. Aquaibom State Coordinator is the principal officer in Aquaibom State and is not answerable to any other person apart from the Biafra Land Coordinator. There should be no asset interference or meddling because only him is responsible for the growth of Aquaibom family. Let me also make it very clear tonight by announcing once again that there is nothing called Aquacross. Nothing called Aquacross. We have Aquaibom family, we have Cross River family. If you're from Cross River State, you go to Cross River and join the family. If you're Aquaibom, you go to Aquaibom. If you're from Aquaibom or Cross River and you're resident or domiciled in Iguacha, you join the Iguacha family. As simple as that. Don't be in Iguacha and fermenting trouble and calling yourselves Aquacross. That is rubbish. That group doesn't exist in IPOB. As I said earlier, no group exists inside IPOB. IPOB is one family. There are some power hungry people that wish to slow us down or the pace of our progress in Aquaibom and in Cross River State. Let me warn those people tonight to desist from doing anything that will lead me to announce their name on air for the world to know who they are. Just leave our coordinators alone to do their work. If you want to chip um, your assistants, you're more than welcome to do so, but do not impede the very wonderful work that they are doing. Do not impede it. We are not like the zoo. I'm also announcing this evening that the office of the Lagos State Coordinator is hereby terminated. If not, I repeat, there is no longer any office of State Coordinator in Lagos. They failed woefully to anticipate the attack on Abulado. And for that, the Lagos State Coordinator of IPOB is hereby removed from his position. The respective Senatorial Coordinators are now the three principal servants we have in Lagos State and they will henceforth report to the Biafra Land Coordinator. Lagos State and all family meetings outside Biafra Land and right across West Africa will be audited by our audit team led by Amarachi Ibe. I am instructing every coordinator and finance officer of every unit and every zone within Biafra Land and outside Biafra Land all the way across West Africa to have their books ready for inspection by our audit team led by Amarachi Ibe. Failure to comply will mean instant expulsion. Let me repeat, every country's zone across West Africa must, that I said, must be audited. You must be prepared for that. I expect senatorial coordinators in all states, except Lagos, to obey their state coordinator, especially in Abia and in Eboi. You must recognize that state coordinators represent me. Every coordinator represents me wherever they are. If you see them, you are seeing me. That is the way it is in every freedom fighting movement all over the world. Ours will not be any different. This movement is led by me. Any coordinator you see standing in front of you is representing me. You must respect them. In Abia, in Ebony, across Biafra and across the whole world, you must respect your state and national coordinators. But, however, if you have any issues or complaints you wish to raise, 
with your relevant superiors, then you're more than welcome to do so. That is why Chike Dozem is there as the head of the Directorate of States that oversees the running of IPOB on a day-to-day -day basis, is there to deal with any complaints you have. And I'm asking him to please look into Angola and report back to me. Let me know exactly or precisely what is happening in Angola. And I'm also making it very clear this evening that there are people in Uvuruwo village in Asa, Umudioka Autonomous Community in Osisioma Logement Area. These people, Mr. Oliver, his deputy is Mr. Igwe, and somebody they call Mr. Ike. They should stop with immediate effect in interfering with IPOB activities. I repeat, they must stop with immediate effect. We don't have anything like Bakasi in our land. They have not done anything before in the past. The governors are trying to resurrect them to do their dirty work for them so that the Fulanese can come in. There is nothing like Bakasi in this very village. There is somebody called Eguzoro, Afa Mefuna, Ihechinyane, and Owele. This is a direct warning to all of you. You must desist immediately. I don't know if you are fathered by Fulani people, that is your business. But we are IPOB, we have come to secure our land and to make sure that we live in peace and harmony going forward to restore Biafra. All this Bakasi nonsense is a relic of the past. It does not stand at this precise moment. It has outlived its usefulness. It is a den for armed robbers to intimidate people and we will not have that in Biafra land. If you are the leader of any Bakasi anywhere in Biafra land, I give you an order to stand down. If you do not stand down, you'll be dissolved. As simple as that. Either peacefully or forcibly, anyhow you want it, we are IPOB. It's as simple as that. We are here to secure the lives and properties of our people against real, imminent, and potential attack from Fulani terrorists. That brings us to the end of our program this very evening. I once again reiterate that Radio Biafra, this very platform, is unbreakable. Unbreakable. Because Biafra is our religion. The only place we worship is here on Radio Biafra. Because Elohim is our God. We have no other God apart from one indivisible God in heaven who will guide, protect, and keep us safe in this very time of coronavirus plague because i want all of us to see biafra that the will of god will be fulfilled in our lives in our time to serve his purpose for africa now and forever he said he said he said from here it is good evening Thank you.